welcome to the first episode of season three of Liberty Dad Podcast. I'm so excited for the upcoming episodes that I have in store. This episode is number 68 of the Liberty Dad Podcast, where we prepare for tomorrow's political conversation by how we engage today. I'm your host, DL, and this episode is Fly on the Wall, Jacksonville Local Candidates. Here in Jacksonville, we have three candidates running for city council in the 2023 election cycle. I brought all three of them in to sit down and enjoy some casual conversation. No scripts, no prepared questions, and no prepared answers. For this episode, you get to be a fly on the wall. And with that, let's get into it. Take it. All right. <laughs> all right so there's right, a now. recording in progress now. Awesome. Oh, That's yeah, gosh. it's awesome. We're, we are recording. That sounds so really good. So we've been sitting here, everybody, for like a few minutes, just chilling, cutting up, and now we're going to be like super duper serious because, you know... That's who we are. That's, That's who we are. That's who we are. The kind of people. We're, we're, we're very serious We're cutting dry. So my name is DL. If you, if you never tuned in, I'm DL. This is my podcast, Liberty Dad Podcast, and I have with me in studio, literally in studio... Real life. We're, 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 no we're here. Look, right. Look, we're right. here. Right. 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 So literally in studio, meaning um, a room in my house. <laughs> this <is> my <laughs> That's my studio. Uh, but I have these two gentlemen here. So I've got Eric Parker. You say two gentlemen? Guys. Say two, so I, can two I got two oh, gentlemen and this other guy oh, down here. Oh, because okay. he is John um, Cena. Geez. I got two <laughs> gentlemen. You figure out which oh, one's boy. not. So, <laughs> maybe I better push you. this drink a little bit forward. Maybe I've had a little bit John too much Cena. already, even though I've not even finished with my first drink. Uh, okay, so anyway, I have these three gentlemen with me, right? That's four all together. I'm getting this right. I will get it right before the end of the night. So I think, that you can count to four? By right. the end of the night, you'll be able to count to four. By the end of the night, there's four of us. I've right. only had four drinks. Right. All right, so, well, there's oh my three goodness. of us and one on the floor. Right, right, right. right. So I've got, I've got, so I'm looking on the screen and I like naturally want to like talk from my right to my left and backwards. But anyway, so I've got Eric Parker here. I've got Tracy uh, Robinson. Is it Robinson or Robinson? It's Robinson. Robinson. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, awesome. So Rob Ro Robeson, I'm gonna try to say Robinson. It's Robeson because it's it's spelled Rob is on. Like it's, it's really Robinson, but people get it confused with Robinson. So the Rob um, is on. Yeah, Rob so is. So I'm not Nicky. Rob, Rob, Rob is, is on. Right. Just don't Rob put the in. Just don't so put. The, if you put say the Robinson, that's right. right. Robin. It's not Robin. There's exactly. not an extra right. in. in mm -hmm. the... That's all. Rob is on. All right. Mm -hmm. So all right. All right. Yeah. All right, so Tracy's robe is on, <laughs> right. yes. and then to the left of him is Pastor Tub. <laughs> he's like, oh, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's new to this. He's new to this. You can talk. You know that, right? So, so Pastor oh, Tub is just... new, as you can see with the age differential oh, here. Whoa. The podcast thing is new to him. 47? I, I somehow went from 35 to like 90. And I, I completely <laughs> missed the whole podcast thing. I'm lucky I can use my phone, I guess. All right, right, right. right. <laughs> Because, I mean, so, everybody does like this for their phone, right? Right, 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 right. Still text use, messaging stuff you yeah. guys are talking about. I still use Jitterbug. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, just Jitterbug, one thing's Jitterbug. Most Jitterbug. Three numbers. I can call my wife, my kid, and the cops. <laughs> help me. I'm lost. Your landliner. <laughs> <laughs> so what we're doing here is cutting up, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just cutting up. Just shooting uh, it up. No, but we're going to talk tonight about just various, uh, num whatever comes to mind. We don't really have a set schedule or set script here. And these three gentlemen are running for local office here in Jacksonville. So I think each one of them should talk about what office they're running for really quickly before we cut up anymore. We gotta get serious for just a few minutes. Right? Mm. But cut up for uh, I'm cut up. So they need to. <laughs> <laughs> you can edit that. You out. can't do see, it. <laughs> I'm not. See, this is why I script on my podcast because I'm all like, blah, 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 are we doing this or not? <laughs> no, we're, we're doing it. I thought you said we're. I only got. I, only, I got like three minutes of. Nice. All right. All right. So uh, so. Uh, Gentlemen, just go ahead and describe your campaign run, what you're up to, and uh, let people know. So I'll start with myself. Uh, my name's Eric Parker. I'm running for Jacksonville City Council in District 2. Probably don't know where that at, is at unless you're local to Jacksonville, but District 2 is the northeast side of Jacksonville. It's mm -hmm. basically as far northeast as you can go in Jacksonville before you hit Nassau County. Um, I decided to run for Jacksonville City Council because I used to work for a local craft brewery in Jacksonville. And city council, first off, the COVID lockdowns that happened throughout our state at the beginning of 2020, I guess, 2019, 2020. Say that, yeah, go 2020. Um, and then city 
we opened back up, but city council passed an ordinance that would fine small business owners $500 if they had 50 people or more on their property. That passed with bipartisan support, Republicans and Democrats. So that encouraged me to run because I was tired of them finding small business while also taking our tax dollars and giving it to big businesses in Jacksonville. So that's me, Eric Parker, running for Jacksonville City Council District 2. And uh, my name is Ronald Tracy Robeson of City Council District 8, which I'm running for. And the reason why I was running is that, uh, what, what is, what is this? I don't know if that's, that's District 3. I'm sorry, is that 3? Are we Indians? Am I allowed we, to say Indians? Are we volunteering as tribute? Eight. Eight. What are we doing? Eight. <laughs> Eight. It's like, it's well, like Scouts of Honor. Is this a Scout? No, I, it, I swear I'm What district are you in? I promise. Was it the Hunger Games? Yeah, yeah but we're yeah, yeah. Years, everybody, 90 years old. Don't know what they don't, I, Everybody no, haven't yeah. seen Hunger Games. Didn't, didn't they no. raise? You got to watch They that. raised three fingers, right? Or read to District 8, Rue, right? I, I thought that was I three, though. So. I thought it was District 3. I was. Man, we're going to have to cut that out, too. Well, right. By the time well, this is start, done, it's going like, to be like the three top. minutes long. Like, <laughs> he said hi, and then it all went to crap after that. Start from the top. Uh, but, um, yeah, you know, I'm volunteering as tribute for District 8. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, the reason why I'm running for City Council District 8 was I got tired of, just like Eric Parker, got tired of the fact that they're making these decisions that affects our lives on a daily basis. For example, when the CDC moratorium was passed, it created a big dilemma between the ones who own the property and the ones who are renting in the property. When the uh, third party came in outside of a two party consenting of a contract that's all supposed to just deal with the uh, tenant and the renter. They came in and they said, you know what, we're going to use the federal government to stop everything that you're doing. And we're going to put beyond our jurisdiction what we want to do with what you guys already have. And that pretty much put in a pretty much a thing about me that said, okay, you already told people that their jobs are essential and not essential because, you know, every job is essential because you got to feed your family and your children, things of that nature, whether you're a janitor or whatever. And it's funny fact that 70% of the jobs that were lost were due to women losing their jobs because they were deemed as non-essential jobs, you know, as far as, you know, um, caretaking or customer service, like, things like of that nature. Do for and, stats and real information. We're just, no, no, yeah. <laughs> I, got, I, I was no, bored. I thought I tried no, this for a few no, minutes. It's He's ironic. Got, like, real numbers and no, stuff. No, it's like, ironic. It's ironic because, geez. you know, he has the, you know, the, the whole movement of the, the, the people saying, okay, well, you know, girl power, things of that nature, but if they were really about what they were saying, then they would advocate for opening up more businesses for those people who were losing their jobs, saying that's essential, not essential. They would fight against that as well. But um, digressing from that, that could be for another topic for, you know, later on in the stream. Like, when you, know, you want to have, have a good podcast fun. with just him, that, <laughs> that will come up. <laughs> that stuff will get fun. But um, any interest group type of thing pretty much failed through the pandemic. It's going to be a weird February for Black History Month. I'm going to tell you that right now. But anyway. Um, so, How do you just throw that one out? There? It's going to be a <laughs> yeah. really weird It's going to be a strange Black February history, but, again. But we're not going to talk about it right well, now. Well, yeah, that's, that's, that's for, another, <laughs> for another little topic. But, uh. But yeah, but that's the reason why I wanted to run because everybody who, who is a homeowner, they know that this is very detrimental to their plans on actually just having their their fence, you know, on their porch with the wooden wind chimes, you know, and uh, having their own farm, being close to your food source and being, you know, just little stuff. They're making it much more complicated just to have a simple life where we were raised up to just have, you know, the picket fence or whatever, whatnot, with the inflation going on, they're putting millions of dollars into projects we don't even care about as far as, you know, practice um, fields for the, you know, Jacksonville Jaguars or any kind of development going on downtown while at the same time upping the police presence within there, you know, basically saying that, hey, we're going to have these new developments in there. There's going to be these criminals coming in there as well, you know, so mm -hmm. we got to put more police over there because people innately want to do bad. It's not the fact that they're about, about, about to be taxed out of the you, house. You know, they just said they actually had a thing they put in there. They said, but no, wait a minute, because they're talking about this crime in that area. And they're yeah. like, no, we're going to build that we're going to build this area up and that will cut back the crime. That's absurd. That makes no because sense. You understand that people are going, there's crime in that area? I'm not going to build in that area. That's, that's <laughs> yeah. crazy. you got to get rid of the crime and then they might mm -hmm. be willing to build. Well, there's only exactly. crime where there's nothing, right? And then when you put something in, then there's no crime, right? Mm -hmm. that's like, it's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm like, no, wait, no, they actually you got know, people yeah. to like, rob and oh, shoot. There's, there's not right. a lot of robberies oh, and man, thefts this, out in Baldwin. You know what I mean? Right. Right here. Like, there's, there's no buildings. There's no businesses. There's nothing. All this crime. I might as well mug yeah. somebody. Yeah. Now. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Man, it's a good day to mug somebody. I bet it's, if we oh, put up so a fun. corner store, there'd be no crime all of a sudden. That, that, that's like, right. Just, mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead, dude. I'm sorry. I'm, just, so, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying, but with, the, but with that fact of what's going into to the policing, this goes into the, the one of the three tenants that I'm going for in my campaign, which will that. be, yeah, just go and transition that. Is to yeah, uh, throw the past us. It's the demilitarization of the police department. 
because with these new developments, they're going to up up the uh, the police presence. And with the budget not going into how you were just saying earlier, like about, de-escalation force training and whatnot, mm-hmm, which is about so, like less than one percent, less than one percent, probably less than half percent of the time a JSO officer spends is in mm-hmm. de-escalation force training, which mm-hmm. I would like to see that double that type of training at least. That would only be one percent. Mm-hmm. Why not? Mm-hmm. The goal should be to get that to five percent of the time. Exactly, is training on de-escalation of force. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like interacting with the community the right way. And doing mm-hmm. the, right. You know, I don't think any of us are against, we don't think all cops are the B mm-hmm. word. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Or the P we, word. Exactly. But we do want to see cops. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. okay. We do want to see police held accountable. That's what I think mm-hmm. most reasonable. But we also, right. also want to see. see police, you know, have them direct their ways of approaching the communities exactly. you know there shouldn't right. be no reason for them to have hollow point bullets and ar-15s right. and tanks unless i can have yeah, all listen, that yeah, right. with now, curfews now here's the thing so, I actually put, so oh. we may want to we may want to pause for a moment on getting into the topics because okay. we still have one person who okay to okay i'm so stuff. sorry okay i'm so sorry but uh, let me go and finish it up um the, the, three, three, tenants. the three tenants i'm running on to my campaign is, you is uh you know <laughs> <laughs> is a, Shouldn't have set me in the middle. Is a <laughs> demilitarization of the police department and federal spying and making, um, along with an effort with me and uh, Eric Parker, making Jacksonville, Anto. Florida. No, no, and, no, 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 no. He's in it now. I'm out. I'm out. I'm and out. making Jacksonville, Florida, I'm a two A sanctuary. I'm the only one that has a gun on me right now. All right. <laughs> well, how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, but um, but yeah, making Jacksonville a second amendment. All right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I feel safe. I feel is, safe because there's a, a gun here. So. Exactly. This holy ground, hollowed ground. You know, is this making? What was that third tenant? Yeah, <laughs> Jacksonville. I'm trying to say, but it keeps jumping in with real two stuff. It's going to be just him trying to finish what he's trying it's to do. <laughs> What? But somehow it's all in tangent, so that's all good. But uh, making Jacksonville, Florida a Second Amendment sanctuary, meaning protecting all of our rights and not even privileges, but a right to have our firearms to protect ourselves. We don't see them as weapons. We see them as tools to protect ourselves and build. And uh, so, yeah, that's what it is. With that being said, what's up? Oh, hey, there's another guy. Hey. Oh, yeah. Well, there's this third guy. He's not a gentleman or anything, but he'll talk for a second. <laughs> All right. So, I, I see, like, this is where I go. Do I talk here? Do I talk here? You guys already know where I'm running. So, all right. My name is Jerry Roraba. Uh, everybody calls me Tub. It actually will be on the ballot as so. And here's what's funny. I went down there to do that. And I said, hey, everybody calls me Tub. And I had to fill this affidavit for it and everything. And I remember I've gone in to vote before. And you see people with like a nickname on there. Like, look at those idiots. And I'm like, oh, dang it. I'm one of those I'm idiots of now. Those. I'm like, I'm that guy. I'm that <laughs> That's guy. Crazy. That's crazy. So um, I'm actually running for uh, city council at large number five. And the difference between you guys and mine is that I'm citywide. So anybody mm-hmm. who lives in Jacksonville can jump on and vote for this one. Mm-hmm. I, I've been telling everybody very clearly that the good thing about at large five and being a libertarian is that inside your districts, you can still keep your RD. Now, I've been very clear to point out, except for two and eight. And two mm-hmm. and eight, you stick with your libertarian. That's right. That's right. But they can keep their RD inside their district and still get the libertarian a chance to come and show them what libertarians right. do. Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah. libertarians really are an RD. Or the good parts of both. No, yeah, just flat, flat joke. Just, just, okay. just uh, R&D. I got it. Research and development. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I tried. I tried. <laughs> We did better when we interrupted him. Mm, Did it really better when we interrupted Tracy? We were crushing we were interrupting him. I gave y'all so much material to work with, right? (laughs) It must be my jokes. My jokes. I'm a dad now. Dad jokes. Right? Hey. (laughs) Really? Like, Um, now we're going to make fun of dad jokes? (laughs) All right, so all right, so here's here's my thing. So I decided what it was is I actually pastor a church here in town, and um, we had an issue with the city a few years back over some permitting issues and stuff like that, and we actually got shut down mm. by the city. Mm. And by getting shut down through the city and going through that whole process, I learned there's a lot of jacked up stuff out there. Right. But once you start getting involved, you start seeing it, you start realizing yeah. things have to change. You were shut down before it was popular. Yes. <laughs> yes. Serious yes. Canceled. Yeah. Canceled. Yeah. And canceled wasn't even cool yet. Awesome. So I started a trend of being canceled. Milestone. So, so, so we blame you for this whole COVID nonsense the last year and a half. <laughs> it's, it's your you. fault. They realized he it worked. Did it. I was the practice. I was the, hey, let's try this. It worked. Those idiots, watch this. So... What it was was going through that. I hold to this idea that says uh, you can't complain and do nothing. Right. And I was doing a lot of complaining. Mm -hmm. Like the more I watched, the more mad I got. Yes, I I would do a lot of complaining. And so, um, as I always tell everybody, you can't complain and do nothing. And then I realized that means me too. 
Right. And so then I realized, you know Hashtag. what, seeing this was my opportunity <laughs> to say, okay, I'm not just going to complain, I'm going to get active and try to do something about right. it. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm not coming in with like, I well, y'all know, I don't come in with an agenda of Christianity. I'm, I, I believe in my faith and I walk yes, with God and everything that I Absolutely. do. But I also believe there's a separation between, mm -hmm. you know, how I can see how government is supposed to work mm -hmm. and how faith is separate from that. Yes, sir. Um, I got biblical examples that we can run down that road for a while, which mm -hmm. we probably don't want to. Um, <laughs> So inside, like I said, I, I come more as the guy who comes as uh, I'm a big personal freedoms guy. Mm -hmm. Like I believe that if, if it's if it's your house, it's your business. That's Do what right. you want. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and so walking that line, that's kind of been my stand on the things. If you get on, hey, if you get on Facebook at Tub for Jacks, you will be able to see Shameless all these things. Blood. If you get <laughs> if you get on the website tubforjacks.com, you can see some videos I made to explain this stuff out. You can give. All of us have an active website for giving that you give, which I'm sure you will cover when the time comes. And inside of that, also, <laughs> we are all three of us going and gathering petitions. Mm -hmm. So be sure that and right now also. We can go anywhere in town and get petitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, at this moment. That's a game changer. Especially, yeah, especially My, for you guys. Yep. Yes, so before that was mentioned through Supervisor Elections Office, Tracy and myself, we would have had to, or we would have been required to get the signatures in our district only, which is no big deal. I think uh, grassroots door knocking is the way to go mm -hmm. anyways. Get in front of the people, let them know. But we're like almost two years away from the election. Yeah. So if I go to someone's door right now and I get a signature, I'm going to have to go back to the door anyways to get in there to remind, remind them, them, hey, you got to go vote. But the benefit of that is we can get signatures outside of our district right now. So if I want to mm -hmm. Sunday go to a Jaguars game and get 100 signatures from people, even if they hear my message, they might know. All right, all right. <laughs> anyways, but or wherever, like so a couple weekends ago, we went to the Riverside Arts Market and yeah. I got 74 signatures. That's right. And then I was able to go drop those off with the other 25 I'd had basically in my district since all this had started. Can I add something to that yeah. real quick? Because we actually went ended up going down together yes. to submit those petitions that we had. And, and here's what was funny. So we're in there and the lady's starting to go through the things and she goes, listen, she was just kind of make sure that a lot of people, they, will, they will put mm -hmm. their birthday down here where it says the date of signing. She goes, so you just gotta kind of be careful when people are filling this out. I'm like, all right. right. right and so right, she just right. kind of starts randomly start going through them. She goes, oh, look, here's one right here. She goes, this one right here actually did just that. They put their birthday. And it was you. It was you. <laughs> the one who's getting petitions Dang it. Out. <laughs> did mine wrong. I just hey. looked at the lady. I'm like, it's him. It's him right I'm there. pretty sure I filled that one out the very first time we met at Dunkin' Donuts. So I was your first. Like, legit. Oh, like, I had not seen what petitions looked like until you handed me one and I signed it. So basically, wrong. you say it's my fault? Like, Good. Yeah. you should have no, showed me. No, but no, no. How many learned. ones do you have wrong? No. Because exactly. See, I made like, sure. All of yours I made right. sure they got it right. But that's what he did. And wow. so I seriously. I was like, I just looked at him like, I'm like, dude, he's like, good? fill out another one. And I made yeah. him fill out another one. We were all right there. I'm like, I'm, yeah. I'm not yeah, going to no, I filled this. it out right in front you, of him. You know, the best part about, in all honesty, because people will question, because we're running against some major parties that already That's have right. some major money put inside yes. their account. That's right. And, and so what I like about the petition process is that it shows ground movement. It shows that people are behind right. the idea of what we're doing. But more importantly, it also makes it so we don't have to give the government more money. Exactly. Right. You know, like, hey, mm -hmm. so not only we kind of stick them both ways on that one. Yeah. But, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead. Keep nope. going. As I forgot where I was going. No, you, so, all right. The, get the, petitions everywhere. Yeah, exactly. That's the benefit of right now. And I don't know how long that's going to last. I'm thinking it's going to be the, till the end of this year, right? Is that kind of how it was worded in the email? That's how it sounded. Yeah, like, but I'm taking advantage of it now, yeah. like, because... Get them all. After the end of this year, I can go back into my district and get in front of people and get other signatures. That's right. And I'm, they haven't told us how many we actually need yet. It hasn't been clear, right? No, there's there's a, a they, guess. 668 was the yeah. number for you before, exactly. right? Exactly. 6,686 yeah. or something like that. It went by population, population. in your district, mm -hmm. cut down by a percentage or whatever. So it was 668, which, you know, that's not that difficult for me to do. My goal, though, is to get 1,000 signatures because who knows – if uh, the signature doesn't line up or they or live somebody this. puts their birthday down there in yeah, the corner. That could mess it up yeah. for yeah. sure. Like Don't that. That's a serious issue. Yes, it is. Good thing I was there to fix it, though. That, I appreciate yeah. it. Because if I had to find you and get that You'd fixed, they would have a whole here. Oh, that's oh, come on, be gas money now. Listen, do you not know what Biden's doing <laughs> to our gas prices? Dude, I want that money I back. I see you at least once a month. <laughs> that, at least, yeah. At least. Should I at least. the city council themselves and with our gas money? That, that, oh, that, speaking of gas tax. Even closer. And that fast, we got the topics. Yeah, you thought. Uh, you were just hanging out. Okay, so 
DL, this is your podcast. What direction? Oh, yeah, you, yeah, what direction right. would you like? <laughs> <laughs> so I see right. run away over there. <laughs> no, hey guys, I'm working hey, the camera. We're, we're, we're having fun. We're, we're 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 talking and oh yeah, we're not live. I was gonna look and see if there was any questions or anything, but no, we're not live. Sorry. Uh, mm-hmm. But do, do we'll do whatever we want, you know? Like just yeah. Do, Talk about the gas tax, talk about what's going on in your district, talk about what we like about the Libertarian Party. You know, I think that would actually be a good thing to introduce people to so that when we put this video out, Mm -hmm. people have an idea. So let's kind of like just talk a little bit about the libertarian the good parts of the libertarian party oh, oh. you know well, we don't libert- have any bad yeah. parts no yeah yeah there's some- <laughs> <laughs> we're not like, we're like other two parties that have all those yeah. bad parts yeah, 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 yeah. we, we sure. ironed all that we out we tend to right? get along yeah. pretty well there's no infighting yeah. over yeah. here yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Good. it's good so we raise um, a lot of money oh a lot yeah, yeah. Give all, all the time money. we are the third party you don't know about because we're so busy never mind you know what <laughs> hey i know a guy who spoke on that i know a guy who spoke on that right there <laughs> so uh so if you don't know if you don't know who the libertarian party is we literally are the third largest party in the united states and we're in all 50 states here's the cool thing we're all about freedom so when you want to do something and then you find out that the government says you can't almost promise you 100 percent beyond a shadow of a doubt if you come to our party and you say should i be allowed to do that we're gonna go uh, yeah probably so yeah mm-hmm. yeah you should absolutely are, if, are you hurting anyone else no right, right. yeah go don't ahead. hurt people don't steal their stuff and, right. and if that's happening somewhere and somebody's already speaking up like mightily about it they're probably a libertarian right yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Like, they just don't know yeah. it yet yeah exactly right. 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 hey do you understand what's that little test you talk the, about the Remember smallest that, political the smallest quiz political oh quiz. yeah the world's smallest mm-hmm. political quiz Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a. I, I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, we don't I don't, have one. We're not, I, I, I don't he'll have pull it up. He'll Plant pull it up yeah. when he edits this. Of course, yeah. When I edit, I'll pull it up and I'll be like, maybe I'll interject. You're gonna edit like, this? So like, where there's well, like he can add links like. Oh, I say because if you edit us, dude, we're no, gonna no, have no, nothing on here. This no, 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 no. Like, that's, oh, that's not gonna help him get elected. What I, <laughs> what I can do, what I can do is add a picture in there, and then I can even like interject me talking about it. Be like, yeah, so here it is. Blah blah. I'm probably not gonna do that though because that's too much work. <laughs> We're still Let's libertarians. We still like to get plenty, I mean, but we I don't mean, want to do too much work. Right, right. Tracy's you know, pretty so. good at pulling up infographics. Yeah, 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 bam. yeah. Right there. Check, yeah. check out his yeah. Facebook but, you and know, YouTube. The world's smallest political quiz. It'll kind of give you, it's like 10 questions. You go on there, you answer them, and there are uh, five economic questions. There are five social questions, and it gives you an idea of where you sit in relationship to us. Now, if you find that you are way, way far away from, from us, that's okay. It's not a big deal. Because I mean, they're wrong. We would, but well, <laughs> like they right. can do it. Yeah, that's right, fine. right. He says that in a very nice, compassionate, nice, the nicest right. possible way. Right. You're wrong, right? But compassionate libertarian. We'll love yes. you anyway. <laughs> well, yes. But, so you know, but 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 it's okay if you if you disagree. Like I've got some friends of mine that disagree with like a lot of what I have to say, mm-hmm. and and it's okay. Like you know, we're still friends. we're still friends. Yep. Right. Yep. And that's that's the cool part. We still love you. Uh, yeah. They because Jesus they tells us we have to sometimes. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because because and, he's told, uh, you know, we may not like you, but <laughs> yeah. you gonna love him anyway. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. yes. Can't kill him. Can't live without him. Right. Right. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I'm not commenting on that one. Right. Tracy's standing know, alone right. on that one. That was well, Tracy okay, Robinson. so that's the end of that episode. <laughs> no, no. Uh, but but as far as libertarianism goes, we are just basically a party that's all about all your freedoms all the time. Like literally, that's a phrase that we have: all your freedoms all the time. And our goal is to give you the maximum amount of opportunity to seek out the best ways to improve your own life. That's 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 it. That's like what that. we do. Um, we want to take over so that we can leave you alone. Boom. That's, it's the that's insidious it. plot to leave you alone. Yes, that's right. It's actually, that's it. Look, because, you know, I'm so cool and I keep up with stuff like that. And there's a right. meme that's very similar to that. <laughs> oh, he said meme. Oh, snap. <laughs> you got it right. He didn't say meme, me. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this head off. I'm walking out of here. That's the note you leave on. I used meme properly. And, and so they have a meme where it says that. It says, so let me turn to take over one yeah. at a time, taking over the world at a time to leave you alone. Right. That's right. Like, mm-hmm. that's, like we just want to leave yeah. you alone. Yep. That's right. Like get some freedoms back. Yep. And yep. So if you're watching though, and if you're like, oh, I'm libertarian, I know what you're gonna ask. I know what you're asking right now. I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, what about the roads? But my roads, my roads. My roads. <laughs> and I, so I, here's the thing: when you see a libertarian, when these guys are on the campaign trail, now try not to bother them with national topics that don't really matter. Talk about local things. Roads is a local thing, though. You mm-hmm. know? Ask them. Say, hey, how do libertarians handle this stuff? And Honestly, here's the general answer. The general answer to how libertarians is that 
a lot of the things that we have now that the government runs, it's not that we want to just not have them at all. We want to shift that responsibility from the government to the private sector. Mm -hmm. So yeah. one of the things that I often tell people, I'm like, hey, you ever like check out consumer reports and people are like, oh yeah, yeah, I check out consumer reports. I'm like, consumer reports tells you about different products or services mm -hmm. and they rate them and then they go out and they test them. Mm -hmm. They do all the things to help us as consumers decide, like, is that something I want to put my money toward? Mm -hmm. I, you know, is that, is that a minivan that I want to put my you know, my child in as I'm going out to soccer practice. We don't have a minivan, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet, all of a but, but not yet. I mean, it might happen. I don't know. You know, it could happen. Everybody always, my understanding is that everybody says, no, I ain't gonna have no minivan. And then all of a sudden they're like, dude, this is a minivan. This minivan. <laughs> and they're always like, no, but this is one of those nice ones. This is a right, one right, ones. right. It's not an 88 caravan. This is right. one of those nice ones. <laughs> it's like how people used to talk about people they didn't like. They're like, I don't like this group of people. But you're one of the but good you, ones. But exactly. you're, you're, you're different. Fine. But you know what's funny? Like, I also say that sometimes the easiest thing that, that, that government, Jeez. especially local government, should be worried about is keep the traffic moving and get the trash picked up. Right. So yep. that, that's really should be right. the main Simple. focus of what's Simple. going right. on. Yep. And, and even in that, the more that we can privatize, get government out of it. Yep. Yep. Like right now, there's actually an issue going around town about With trash, the trash companies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, yep. and, and so we had this argument. Well, yeah, it was a little bit of an argument. We were sitting around, come to find out one of the guys I was talking to works for one of the local trash trash companies oh, yeah that and, sounds and so, like it get heated quick yeah yes it did <laughs> and, and so but he was kind of cool about it he's kind of like yeah yeah we kind of suck a little bit I'm, I'm, <laughs> i won't say his name or his company but you know, there's only three you, uh you, trash Jones. contractors in you, jacksonville you, you though, email so. me i'll tell you exactly his name is not bob jones so, <laughs> but but he came across the thing i said you know what bob i said jones. i said what if we privatize that what now i said what if it started and we can have this conversation that what if it started with okay we got to get a contract and the city does that right now right mm -hmm. but what happens when you go okay good but I don't like them anymore. Mm -hmm. right. I understand that's be somebody says you got to pick up trash. You can't just have it piling up in your yard. I, I'm cool with that. Yeah. So what happens when somebody says I, I want to go to a different company and they'll go, you know what? I'll pay a little bit more if it means um, they're gonna. In fact, we the conversation grew mm -hmm. and it says I'll pay a little bit more if they come twice a week or I'll pay a little bit more if they're willing to bring the trash cans down from where I keep them. Right. And, like I'll pay for those services and mm -hmm. then we have the choice. So then the conversation was turned into like, yeah, but that's not going to be price. It's not make sense for them price wise. I said, that's up to them to decide. Right. We can't decide for a company mm -hmm. that no, you you can't do that because it's not worth it. Let them decide. That's there right. might be some guy who bought a used, you know, uh, truck, garbage truck out there. He caught it online somewhere. And he's like, I'm going to go hump it. So and I'm going to start mm -hmm. knocking on doors. Right. And I'm going to start. Hey, can I in, can I be your trash guy in Nassau County, which is the county just north of Duval, a company and it was Nassau Trash Pros opened up their own small business and they started killing the game because right. they had great customer service. Mm -hmm. Well, I think their competitor was advanced disposal and they might've got bought out by someone else. Waste. I don't, I don't know right. all that level stuff, but long story short, Nassau trash pros got bought out by the bigger company. So there's no more competition, but the difference is they're not being stopped from someone right. else it starting up that small business again and selling it. He had, that, else he had well. that choice. The guy, exactly. the guy built something on his own, exactly. and he decided to sell it. There's nothing like right. there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. Right. But now you know what he could do. Go do it again. Exactly. Right. There's he, probably a non compete call clause well, you know for what? like three years. Or do something, it with it still. All right. You know right. what? Do start a taxi exactly. company or something. Exactly. You know, exactly. And go take yeah. that same spirit and go do something else. Exactly. That leads into another idea that libertarians <clears throat> love to talk about, and it's this occupational licensing. Right. There's always these regulations that say like you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. You know, and, and the greatest um, talking points are regarding like barbers yep. and there's a um, lot of stuff. There's a lot of yeah. but, but there's sport, a lot of yeah. you know everybody wants to jump to and like, oh, would you like to have a surgeon who's never been you know qualified? Yeah, because I'm gonna let my hairdresser like, do upper heart surgery, and I'm like, <laughs> right, right. I'm like, I don't know how like, about we're we draw talk, the line somewhere. Like, like, how, about we, how about we start with just talking about the barber, right? How about we start? How about we start by talking about the person who looks around at their house and they say, what do I have that I can make money with, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? A while back, people might remember this, a while back, they were trying to legislate Airbnb. Yes. Here in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And I went and I fought about that. I, I read up and I argued the heck out of them. I took some of the city council members to task over this, to their face. 
uh, I can't remember who was the guy. There was a guy that did. Are the, we saying um, names? Because yeah, uh, well, I mean, whatever. <laughs> all right, all right. Hey, hey, that'll be great. So, if, if, <laughs> so, so the way my podcast works, if it's if it's super super public, I don't have a big deal, but I don't want to call out like regular everyday people. Okay, that's, right. that's, so that's, city right. council members so, are uh, they're free game. They're pretty much, yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as we're not being rude, I mean, you know, I don't want to be like you listening. Right, right, right. Like WWE, Eric. Eric wanted me to mention. So. But uh, so I went to one of the town halls and I approached the guy right to his face and I was talking to him and he, I was like, he was like, who are you? And I was like, I I'm a Libertarian Party. I think I was the treasurer at the time. And I was like, I'm the treasurer for the Libertarian Party. And I just, I, I like to learn about this stuff. And, you know, plus I'm always also like a real estate agent, uh, not agent, but um, landlord, mm -hmm. you know, some properties and whatnot. And we were trying to actively do Airbnb. But the idea is that if you look around, you should be able to find things in your home or that you have in your possession that you can make money with. Mm -hmm. If you have a pair of clippers and you just happen to be good at it, you could tell I'm not good because I just gotta take it all off. <laughs> like, but if you're good at it, then yeah, you should be able to make money. If you have a car and someone's willing to get into it with you and give you 10 bucks for a ride to the airport, That's you right. should absolutely be able to do it. That's and right. you shouldn't need any permission whatsoever. Because it's your freaking car, and, and that mm -hmm. and that travels down not just like Uber or something. It travels down to your mechanic or whatever. Right. Because they got a lot of guidelines mm -hmm. for mechanics. Oh, yeah. yeah. But like like I go listen because my hair is very serious. It okay. is. I can. Right. Mine so this is, right. You, you know <laughs> we're in different places <laughs> sometimes. Honestly, I've been staring like, at it a few. Like we, we care. Okay. <laughs> hey. We, hey we I mean, care. whoa. We, we now care. I'm the so, third wheel. But but, but, <laughs> but I, wait, see, you're not the gentleman now. <laughs> but I but I did, like I, I sit there and, and I go get my hair cut every two weeks. I just kind of mention like. You know what? And to hear the stuff that they have to pass and to keep going and get trained every right. year and stuff like that, I'm like, mm -hmm. why? What's going to change? You you already cut my hair, right? You already do it, right? Yeah. Why do you got to go and get what's what's changed about this over the past year right, right. that you need to get more training? Yeah. Like that's, but the problem is this: we've just accepted it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like they don't they don't mm -hmm. put like who's pushing back right. against this and, stuff? And, and I tell people, I'm like, well, you know, if everybody knows what a good haircut looks like, mm -hmm. right? There exactly. was a story a while back. It was a, I don't remember what city it was in or what, what state it was. It wasn't Florida, but um, there was a, a young man. He was a young black man. He went to school and he was like 13 or something like that. And he just happened to get a bad haircut. And all his peers were making fun of him. Well, it turned out that the principal like cut hair on the side or something like that. Mm, and the I principal was the like, story. you know what? He's like, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go ahead and give you a haircut. I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm gonna trim this up. I'm gonna get it right. And one of the things that I pointed out to people, I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm uh, clearly I'm not black i'm trying to get in the camera here depending, i'm not black depending but, on who you ask right right i guess depending on who i ask but but here's the thing of all i i have i've met many many black people and you can attest to this if you will he's one of them he's right. he is he yeah. is hey, now, bonafide now. You know. bonafide right here so but you all picked up on i have yeah. i have i remember <gasps> Tracy's going to, black oh my goodness don't be, don't be oh, alone no, no, i'm no, fine no, no. i'm fine right, right, right. Hey, don't, get right, right. don't get us don't get us canceled we're gonna get canceled so i just get church right, shut down right, don't right. worry about it <laughs> Good. So, so what ended up happening? What, what what ended up telling people? I was like, you know, I've I remember going to school with a you know like in public school where there was a lot you know I, there was a lot of black peers and you know a kid would come in with a new haircut and everybody like oh man that's a great fade and mm -hmm. I'm looking at it I'm like yeah I guess <laughs> like, I had no idea what I, I, I had suppose no idea. So, right right what? I had no idea what I was looking at. what but, happened you know, to this all of his peers hair. all of his peers could tell a good haircut now all the all the white kids <laughs> white kids I could look at him and be like. Dang, man, you need a new barber, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so bokeh, people man. instinctively can tell when you've been to a good barber or not. Yeah, we don't need any kind of licensing or something because everybody knows. They can look in the mirror. Your so friends can tell you all right. that good stuff. You didn't finish telling us about the principal, though. I wasn't know what happened. The, <laughs> oh, the that's a good was story. There, was there more to oh, that? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So the principal, all he did was he pulled the kid aside. He gave him a haircut. He gave him a better haircut. And then, actually, I tell you what, this kind of bleeds into education. He actually said something that was really phenomenal. And it was, I'm paraphrasing here. He basically said, when you're like this age, a haircut is a big deal. And he said, so I wanted to make sure that this kid wasn't embarrassed. And I think the issue was the kid was trying to wear a baseball cap. Okay. And they didn't allow baseball caps. Right. 
And so then they, you know, they, they figured out, well, okay, what's the reason for you being, you know, so obstinate about wearing this baseball cap? And he was like, oh, I got a bad haircut, whatever. You know, and the principal was like, all right, you know, I'm going to take care of you. And then he took care of him. Why? Because he cared about the, uh, this would be a very libertarian. Mm. Yeah, that would be a, I don't know if the principal was a libertarian or not, but that would be a very libertarian <laughs> action thing he was. to do. Yeah, because yes, we're, we're just filling yeah, a need. We're filling a need. Yeah, we're going to fill this need and we're going to take care of it and we'll be fine. I don't have special training, but it's right. better than that way that the person right. who did have training yeah. jacked it up. And, and exactly. imagine, mm -hmm. imagine if that principal, like, I don't know if he was a qualified barber or not, but clear he was qualified enough, enough to help out this young man so that he didn't have to go throughout his whole day with all his friends and peers making fun of him mm -hmm. right and this is the idea of libertarianism is to say like look in most cases it's pretty it's pretty you can tell pretty quickly when somebody knows how to do what mm -hmm. they're doing right exactly. if it's open heart surgery yeah that's a different story we can have a longer conversation about that but hey let's talk about the simple the simple stuff, stuff. the oh. things that are in most people's lives yeah. so the, the common airbnb things. uh uh lyft and uber right and hair cutting exactly. and hair braiding and so, so, so are you fixing to drag yeah. us down education because so, i'm down for okay. well i was just gonna well, say uh, you brought it up you said I was hey, gonna I think say, the education you, you won't yeah. go anywhere that i won't go i promise you okay all right dealing with business regulations and the government deciding who can do work there's already things in place like like industry standards, right. right? Like electrical work as an industry standard. Right. Now, yes, there are building and zoning codes, but you know what they use? They use the industry standard that mm -hmm. has already been set Which, by the industry. Some scrub right. can mm -hmm. electrician. Know that. Yes, mm -hmm. you learn that in a journeymanship or apprenticeship to become a journeyman as an electrician. Like mm -hmm. the government didn't mandate. The government adopted the industry standard. It was already set by the right. industry. Same thing. How, how do you Good haircut, bad haircut. Guess what? You're not that good at cutting hair. You, you should, might be done with this. Yes, this right. Absolutely. Maybe you should the, do something else. The, the, the market will dictate exactly. that. Exactly. Right. The market Swifter. will dictate. But, but but here's the thing. Now, how do you think they wired houses and stuff before all of these regulations came in? You know what the guy did? Exactly. <laughs> he went out there and he wired it. He ran it. He did what he wanted to do inside of his house. That was right. his business. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. I actually I, I was going out to get petition signed. And there was this lady who came up, she said, yeah, let me tell you something. And so she was doing work inside of her house. They were gutting their house and redoing it. Her husband is a contractor. Mm. So they didn't pull any permits. They were just kind of pulling stuff out. And the one dumpster come by, nobody really said anything. They pulled out a second dumpster, and now the neighbors started snitching on them. Mm. So then the city got involved, and they came in. They said, you can't do this you work anymore. On your own house. Oh, yeah, reported, snitched on them. So, <laughs> so they snitched on them. And then, right, this guy's a licensed contractor. That's what he does all day, every day. And then he's trying to just do some stuff inside of his house. And because he didn't pull permits, they wouldn't let him. So they actually had to move out of their house while they did the work. You know what was funny? When the government didn't know, perfectly fine. Right. Oh, yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? That was all the same. Because he's following an industry now, standard. Right. Tell me what y'all think about this, because this is where my mind went to. I'm like, okay, let me see if I got this. If a gentleman who knows what to do decide he wants to wire his house, good on him. Now, if it burns down, I think then the insurance company can go, um, you didn't hire a license, whatever. We're not going to cover the yeah, loss. Right. I if, think that's fine. Yeah. If that's mm -hmm. in their contract with the insurance company when they- then That's what I'm saying. Fine. Yep. yep. I, exactly. Think, here's the thing is, don't you think then certain things can be done right we can have a standard but then at the same time i go you know what? i know this guy he, he does a lot of work he does side work okay right. he's a great electrician dude could do me a favor because let's be honest how many of us have done that we know a right. guy never I mean, never since we have Shoot. never done anything like <laughs> that and we always call the right people pull the right all person. the time we always do the right thing i don't know anybody I don't talk to anybody. you're my circle you're the only people in the world i talk to and, and i'm have, not an electrician and we have no skills so inside of that, my, my point was. I mean, if I need to change a faceplate, I call an electrician. I mean, right, I want exactly. It done. Yeah, you want it done every right. time. Mm -hmm. But my my thing was, this guy clearly <laughs> listen. He does it all day. He does it all day at his yeah. job. He knows what he's doing. Right. So mm -hmm. you're trying to tell me now, all of a sudden, because he didn't go pull the permit, it cost 35, 40 right. bucks, and get the government involved to come do inspections. You think his work is going to be less? Let me tell you something. His work's probably going to be even better. It's his house. Absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, why do we get involved? Why? And right. when I told yeah. that to her, and I said, listen, I said, I think you. Should should have been allowed to go about your business right and i had the conversation with you know if it burns down insurance company might right. go it's, you just, it's going to be on you that. because you have a higher incentive to do the job you need to do because you have to suffer the consequences yep. more right. immediately than if there right. was a like national if you're at government. work you might be like oh, my, my boss will take care of it Who cares? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. on you <laughs> and what people don't realize bit. is that you could still have a mechanism just like the pulling of the permit so when you get your house and you get your insurance the insurance company could say all right well we you know, it, let's just assume that there's no permits to be pulled with the government. Mm -hmm. The insurance company could say, okay, well, you need to have some sort of verification that 
it was inspected by yeah. some private like, company yeah. uh -huh. that tells us that hey you it, whoever did it you the neighbor some you know somebody that you called in whatever that person did it the correct way yep. that's right correct way if you will yep. however, however the sta that's industry defined. standards he was talking right. about mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. they did it by the industry standard and so then the the insurance company could easily say like look if you don't show us that you did this we're not insuring your house and, right. and they have that right yeah they have and that when right. you yep. sell your house or somebody condo. could say hey yeah, you if you really don't sad. if like remember um if you ever bought a car there were some people that used to like keep receipts of like everything, everything uh -huh. that, like they have like a light bulb change on their, their their headlight and they were like they got that documented they're like here's all the documentation right and so then you could look through or now we have like the what is it the car, car facts or whatever yep. mm -hmm. you know where you could go and you could look at the car's history and whatnot you could simply have something like that and if it doesn't have all the receipts that you're expecting to see right and you, you, like if there's no receipts Right. Then you might be like, well, uh, but, but you can make that sketchy. decision. Right. You can decide at that point, hey, I'm right. in or I'm out. You can decide. You can yeah. take the risk. But if, but if mm -hmm. there are the receipts, then you can be like, oh, okay, it looks like they've done everything by the book, if you will, or mm -hmm. the industry standard. Mm -hmm. And and so that's what libertarianism is. It's all about freeing you from the chains of government, but not necessarily the chains that exist in general. That's it's not, right. bad. That's it's not right. bad to have guidelines for things. Right, exactly. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's not bad to have a standard and say, like, uh, I think if I got this right, correct me if I'm wrong, we're not supposed to use aluminum wiring in a house anymore. They right. used to use it, but now now it's not considered industry standard, right? So it's 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 not a bad idea for an insurance company or even a bank to say we're not going to loan you on this house With until this. all the mm -hmm. um, all the aluminum wiring is removed, mm -hmm. right? Or you got to do this other thing to make sure you know you, you got to remove it yourself, but or whatever. The thing in is, order there'll for be a to... bank somewhere that says we don't care. Right. Yeah, yeah you know I'm saying right. so. And, and then the, you can that, find a loan shark somewhere. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. Seriously. Right. No, uh, we only use. Right. I'm <laughs> kidding. Listen, <laughs> I'm not recommending a loan shark. You can, you can find big fat Paul. You can find big fat Paul somewhere. Right. That is a not loan shark in quotes. I am not a, a financial shoot. advisor. <laughs> a loan shark start with. Psst. Come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I don't need to borrow anything. We're good, sir. Thank you. That was me. He means that. He means that in a very derogative sense toward bankers, right? Yes. Like we're just, I know, was using yeah, that term. Yeah. yeah you guys I meant are Bank of America. You know, they <laughs> have that show. They have that show Shark Tank. That's what he means. He means uh, like, like that's kind of yeah, investors. Yeah, 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 investors. You know. So, oh, yeah. Were you dragging us into education? We can go to education. Trying to get well. I love public education. I wish we had more Common Core, and I wish Ron is just kidding. <laughs> All right, say, so I was like, how hold long up. can we let him go like this? Do we just let him how go? long can <laughs> I go like this? I don't know. We can get into education, but as city council, we don't really have a say. We're saying it. Right. Yeah. But See, done. <laughs> boom. But hold on, uh, let me ask you a question. I don't know if we have a say in funding. I think. See, that's why I don't understand it. It mm. almost seems like when budget time came around, it didn't even it get didn't, it, didn't, it didn't bring that up. But let me ask you a question. Um, what if we're not talking about us specifically? Because are we just representing us or Libertarian Party? Because I think the Libertarian Party, yeah. we have some pretty strong opinions about right. education. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you're right. You're, we're limited yeah. in, yeah. like, you can't come to us and be like, hey, how would you vote on this? I'd be like, uh, I wouldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. Right. there's no reason to travel down this road. It's kind of, listen, we, there's certain topics people right. come up and ask you, well, what do you think about this? And I remind them, I go, I'm running for city council. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. so there's no reason to travel down this so, road. So what you're saying is you would, <laughs> you would not answer the question if somebody said, hey, should we pull out of Afghanistan? You would be like, oh, I'm, running I'm, like, for I'm just council. running for city council. Yeah. <laughs> and as a libertarian, I form no opinions. So I right. just sit back. Right. 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 I don't we say got anything a, online. We got just, opinions. <laughs> we just sit back and we mind our own until somebody pokes us. And then, Exactly. Then, then there's a problem. Do something. Yeah. Then we shoot him with Mama our Bear AR wakes up at that time. <laughs> so, are you traveling us down the road of Afghanistan? Because it sounds like. Hey, hey. <laughs> well, let's go back to education. Well, education right. now right. became a little right. less tricky. Let's so start with the ant yeah, before we get to the mountain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we should probably stick to like more local, local, local stuff. Things, things. Local uh, issues. Okay. Uh, but education, you know, it's very interesting. Um, you know, I here's something that we can talk about. Naming of the schools, Ooh. renaming the schools. That'd be great. Because there was like what, fifteen or sixteen that they voted to rename. Now it wasn't city council; it was the school board, right? The yes. School board actually voted for it. But we can talk about it. I mean, you can still have an opinion. You're allowed. This is America, so, sort of kind of, kind of you know. So, sort of, not to interrupt, but I no, did no, interrupt. I did anyways. Um, last year they the voted speaking, on that. Totem. That's right. I got it. <laughs> there last it year, okay. um, they voted on the half cent sales tax that would go to schools right education okay. public yeah. education we 
I haven't seen where that money has went to. But the way that they did that, though, was a voters referendum. Is that how, what it's called? A ballot initiative? I think so, yeah. so the whole entire city of Jacksonville voted, and I think it won 60% or more. I'm pretty sure it wasn't like a close race, you know, because us were like, well, you know, a democracy is just the can it's, be it, one it, by it, one vote. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah democracy yeah. is what two wolves it, and a sheep exactly, trying to figure right, out what's right. for dinner. But exactly. I don't even think that that vote we have was pizza that later. close. Oh, oh yeah. we don't, we don't get to eat. Uh, oh, well, we're done. Well, I'm just hey, hey, we appreciate your time. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> but all I was my only point was that at least to raise that tax, they did a referendum. They didn't increase spending without the taxpayer. The right constituents of Jacksonville at least getting a chance to and, vote and, on whether or not and how it should are, go up half a cent. We? Well, we, I mean, we that's vote. a personal question. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, <laughs> like we voted, please right, take more of our money. Well, I mean, yeah. I voted. Everybody tell their IQs. I don't, I never took IQ <laughs> tests. Oh, you, can, you, know. you can talk to me until I'm an idiot. Do you, think, <laughs> do, you, do you think Duval County Public School is more advanced enough to give us IQ tests? I wouldn't even know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't but the know. thing is, like that, it's a, but they keep hitting us up exactly. with these different right. things. It's a half cent here, it's a half cent, but that starts adding up. Yeah. yeah I think absolutely. that people are not separating, like, wait a minute, didn't you just hit us up for this? Right. And where's the money coming yeah, exactly. from? I thought you already had right. money for this. How much and what are we getting out of it? Right. Absolutely. Exactly. That's the big thing. Like, if hey, you own so your own business, you look for an ROI. Right. And right. I put absolutely. money in, I want money back. Did our right. getting absolutely. out of this? Did the FCAT scores go up? Did more kids get scholarships? Did the SAT scores go up? Did, you know what I mean? Did more people get accepted to college out of those? struggling school well, districts before the show we were talking we, we kind of briefly mentioned uh that one school here in jacksonville that got renamed westside high it was what forest mm -hmm. you know forester b and Nathan, they can be forced who's Forrest. that named after i'm just kidding we don't <laughs> so Forrest but, but they renamed it to the tune we'll of like three hundred thousand dollars yeah and in if you go back and you look at some of the arguments people are like oh well you know the reason we need to rename it is because you know students aren't getting a good education and this was like in 2013 what? 2016 i don't know it was it was, it was four or five years ago right like it was it was a significant amount of time and so i think you know and we just recently voted or not we but you know the, the right. uh, school board they just recently voted to like change like 10 more names mm -hmm. or something like that and so i'm like all right what do we get out of the last one like our school scores higher than they were before are mm -hmm. we getting better students even if they're not schools you know even if the, you know, I, I understand there's issues with the uh, testing and whatnot, but are we getting better students? Are, are, do we feel like students are better educated out there? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, and then, like did it change morale and everything right. started changing exactly. around? Right, there? right. Exactly. Like, and my argument has been like it won't do that. Are they getting? Are they getting new school books? Are they getting new curriculums? Are they getting? Right. Oh, they're getting courses? new curriculum. Well, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're, right about, you're right about that. Uh, taking us to CRT. <laughs> Boy, oh, you're right about that. Oh, wow. snap. I don't, know, <laughs> I don't know that Tubbs should be the guy to take us to CRT. Wait, yeah, well, wait a minute. I know, right? Let's make it. Because <laughs> uh, he's, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> because so I'm not a proponent of it. just came to the campaign, <laughs> but no, go ahead and try to vote for me. Right. 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 <laughs> So, oh, yeah. so, but, but no, I think I, I, I think that's part of the, the, the consideration that voters need to realize is that what are we getting out of all these things? What are the promises? What are we actually getting? I don't care that, you know, yes, there may be a, a, a number of students today that are saying like, hey, you know, I don't like this name. It's embarrassing, blah, 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 blah. And, and that's fine. And, and if we want to have that conversation and rename it on the basis of, hey, it's embarrassing and we'd rather have a different name, that's fine. But when we start talking about results, that's what right. we're oh, that's get, then, it changed. The then I want to see yep. those results happen. If we don't get them, I don't want to, first of hey, all, I don't want to spend a penny to begin with. That, I definitely that don't just, want to, I gonna, definitely don't like, want to spend another penny. Like, let's just be honest, because how many of us as libertarians, if they start putting something on the ballot and it talks about the cost of it, I go, right. nope. Nope. Right. Mm, like, that's right. what I look exactly. for. It's, it's yeah. always, exactly. it says, what's the cost? I go, nope. And I usually talk about the same thing i said if you read the thing they don't tell you like how much of this will yeah. offset no if yeah. it increases at all mm -hmm. i'm no and right. i think that we're all in agreement that most any bill that comes through us on city council it's an extra spending bill nope nope, nope. that's right. No, right justify it yeah like like i understand that we have to have expenses right okay there has to be things that the city and the government pays for right but it doesn't have to be to the degree that it's going to now right and exactly. i think there has to be some balance in there of some yeah. people that go no like i would love to have all three of us sitting up there out of the out of the 19 spots and they go three of them are gonna they're gonna tell you no right Autom like, like, automatically like, like, right, right. Automatic. they're then, starting with no the now we are doing ron some... paul yeah, yes Dr. no <laughs> i love it so <laughs> if they start with no now they gotta start changing their thinking now yep. they gotta start coming around to what are we gonna get out of this right. what's gonna win exactly. these guys mm -hmm. over at this point? what do we right. need to cut out of this spending bill mm -hmm. and 
move that money over to something that they might be for. Right? And not only that, not only, you know but, I mean? but what's in city council, the three of us, we're going to not only talk about and just not just say no, but educate our constituents about what yeah. these bills are, right. and what's going on, because they just make decisions for our, you know, at our detriment without us even knowing what they're what's going on. Right. Because I think that unfortunately, because I'm one of these, I'm as guilty as every, anybody is. Mm -hmm. I didn't care about what was going on downtown. I right, didn't right, right. care. Right. Mm -hmm. I was more of I'm gonna do my life until I until I needed something. In fact, mm -hmm. I even yep. mentioned that I said, until I needed something. And I'm like, hey, well, why are not city council doing anything for right. me? Mm -hmm. See what that what they have to have. I think we have to bring this level of integrity. Absolutely. Back to government, back to mm. city council. Yep. In the sense that that I would I want to be that guy. And I want I think we're all sitting in the same way that they feel confident that even if I'm not tracking them, they're doing what they ought to be doing. Yeah. Right. Yep. And, and I yeah. think that that's our biggest thing. That I think there are things that we can make this hard stand on that they can go, hey, I'm behind that. Absolutely. Because yep. you know, mm -hmm. the more people I talk to, I kind of these smaller, what do they call them? Dinner table topics. Right. Yeah. And, and as we start going through them, these are the things that people go, yeah. Like the more we talk to people, yeah. the hey. more, like when we were out there getting petition signed, yeah. the more we talked about, it, they're like, right. yeah, Absolutely. yeah, you know, it's, it's those type of things. The problem is so many people don't get involved because they just kind of let things go and they don't realize that that, that local government is probably going to affect their lives more than federal government, their friends and stuff like that. Like exactly. it, it, it actually affects how we live life by the things that get passed downtown. Yep, right. And so I think that if we can kind of be those ones that kind of come out and say, mm -hmm. this is who we are. This is what we believe. Like we make some of those hard stands and we yeah. tell them, mm -hmm. this is where we're going to be. If right. you're not here to tell me otherwise, this is the direction I'm voting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, Until I get enough emails, yeah. one might be enough. You know what I mean? Nobody says get, anything. Yeah, right. nobody I'm says anything. Vote <laughs> and that one person goes, this is a bad idea. Well, all right. Then. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, let me hear you out. And that's another thing is like, we need to make sure that us as city council members, we're representing the people that are in our district for you. It's the whole city of Jacksonville, mm -hmm. the people that voted you into office. You're not beholden to first your political party. Exactly. You're also not beholden exactly. to the contractors that work for the government, that the lobbyists that give the money to get mm -hmm. us, not us, but them mm -hmm. elected and reelected. That's not who you're working for. Mm -hmm. You're working for your constituents. You're not working for the money. That's and right. that's the problem is you could go right now and look up the local agenda wherever you live. And there's going to be a dollar sign with zeros <laughs> and commas behind it. Mm -hmm. Where's what company is that money going to and who are they well connected with? Why are you sending money to a developer in uh, Franklin, Tennessee? to develop a condo in Riverside of Jackson. Exactly. That's awfully specific, Why? but yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. that's one that of the things. That doesn't seem random at all. That's, but, and, but you're right. You know, that's, it, it happens well, it, every other week. Do you hear what they've been doing now? Like, well, yeah, we're going to build this. We're going to give them incentives. We're going to give them money towards building this, but they have to hire 10% of the people have to come from Jacksonville. And I'm like, okay, I think that's a horrible number. I think you should yeah. be higher than that. But that's the numbers they go by. And I start looking at it. I go, okay, who's going to monitor that? What's going to mm -hmm. happen when... Yeah, when one guy quits, a guy gets uh -huh. fired. No, like, no, who's going no, and making no. sure that hey, we got to oh, this this is a Jacksonville guy who yeah, quit. Yeah, we got to yeah. put. Nobody's going to do that. Right. And before exactly. you know it, the jobs are gone. The contracting jobs from the beginning. Listen, there are a lot of contractors who live here in town. They can pretty much do anything around here and stick to Jacksonville That's people right. exactly. and That's be right. just fine. Exactly. But the problem is, once again, you're right. Start following that money. Exactly. Start following right. that money. Because ultimately, when it comes time that you want to put $250,000 in your account, your reelection campaign, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, you want to throw that money into there, guess where they're getting it from? It's not always local people. Exactly. You might want to track that down for a reason because you know what that means? It means, you know what? Unfortunately, they're beholden to somebody. Exactly. Right. And then yeah. at some point, somebody's going to call that back. At yeah. some point, somebody's like, hey, I gave X amount of dollars. I expect to, I want my return on my investment. Right, right, right. Yeah. And when is this going to kick through? And I think that if we, if the people know that this is who we are, this is where we stand, these are the things that we'll fight for. Exactly. Like yeah. I'm saying, we're gonna, like, if we're going to be local, let's keep it local. That's let's, right. Let's, let's support the people here that I'm far more worried about supporting our people inside of Jacksonville and not to be ugly than I am about Nassau or Middleburg or anything like that. Like, I right. don't mean that ugly, but these are our people here. Right. Yeah, and, right. And, I, and I think that becomes our focus. It's the idea of, Remember who you represent. Exactly. You were exactly right because what it's turned into, it's become these people who are in office. First, they represent themselves, that's like right. they're, they're out yeah, for themselves right. first, right. Right. and then it's party. Yep. They'll walk that party line pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I'm saying? And then somewhere in the mix of things comes the people. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? Because they they don't spend enough time. Like when was the last time you saw somebody running for city council? They come right. around. Yeah. What happens when they're in? Right, like, right, how, right, how right. How many right. see them when they're in? Right, right. Yeah. And, and you know what I'm saying? I think and that's they're in office. Right. They yeah. get elected and then you never hear You'll from them. You'll see them again, again in four years. That's, that's where our infighting actually shines. 
right? <laughs> because <laughs> because <laughs> there, <laughs> there isn't really a party line to walk because we're too busy arguing exactly. about the party line. The party line. That, that, that is so, a good point. So it's a drawback in some sense. I mean, in, in if people, if you've ever watched Libertarians, we we can we can throw down with each other, right? We can get we're, pretty we're, catty. They yeah, like to we're, say we're we'll rough. eat our own. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. We're rough, but. In, in in while that in some sense that's not always a good thing there is a value there because that means that we're not simply just saying oh this is what the libertarian party stands for so therefore walk the line you know i have to mm -hmm. walk the line mm -hmm. it's you know and everybody knows it and every libertarian candidate knows that when it comes to the libertarian crowd you have to work hard to win the vote of every single libertarian That's like right. literally it's not one automatic at a time. it's not automatic like, there, yeah. yeah there's no automatic like there are plenty of libertarians that'll just be like oh he's a terrible li not even a real libertarian I'm, I'm gonna vote for they say that yeah. they, they yeah. say that oh yeah <laughs> so listen because i'll tell you here's what happens unfortunately a little while back before this last election um I, I went to the store by my house and a guy came in and he's talking to the people working there and he goes i went and voted today and i'm like good like, I want people involved in the process. Like, exactly. I, like I'm not, listen, I, often, I I tell my boys, I don't care who you vote for, you go vote. You get involved in the process. You, you know what I'm saying? Right. And so this guy went through, he goes, I went and voted. I'm thinking, so I'm kind of, all right. And he goes, Democrat, all the way down the line. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> what? Didn't know their name. No, knew. Exactly. exactly. It was just that this is what I do. Right, right. And so you're right that even though we have some of this infighting, if you will, hmm. we've gone through the mix now. Right. Like, we don't get a stamp by the Libertarian. In fact, you... When I first came to you about running, you mentioned that. You said, listen, libertarians are going to come after you first. Right. Like, that was kind of how you put it. I'm like, oh, never mind. Because like, oh, of right. your pro <clears throat> profession. My, my profession. And right. just overall, he's like, they're going to come first. Like, right. don't assume you got this group. Right. And that's the way it should be. Yep. Like, if I fall into one of the two major parties, here's what it kind of does. I got them. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a certain level of those guys. You have your 47%. Yep. Done. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, right. done. Boom. Boom. So, the all I have to do the now, alternate, right? Yeah. yeah. The, the Whatever alternate. side you're on. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> I got, like, you almost know I got this many. Right. So, that cuts out an amount of work. It's, it's, they've actually cut out yeah. a little bit of caring about the people. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. got them. Yeah. I'm gonna, now I got to go fight for the ones I don't have. Well, here's where the libertarians come in. Right. We don't have that luxury. Yep. We have to fight for all of them. Yep. We have to fight That's for right. everybody and every side because, in reality, when we win, when we win, yes. it's going to be based off the fact that we stole votes from right. the two major parties. Right. Because exactly. we don't have enough to just ride it out like these two major parties do. Right. We got to fight. Mm -hmm. We, we got to yep. put some work yep. in behind it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that scratching and the fighting and getting through yeah. makes us better representatives of the people. Right. Mm -hmm. Because we had to go through it. We didn't just get to assume, got this amount of money, got these votes. Right. We got to scratch our way the whole way. Right. So, and, and, and the other thing about that, is a um, there was a there was a different podcast a while back that I was listening to and it had one of our former chairs on it and he was saying that yeah the infighting is you know it's frustrating to libertarians sometimes because you know sometimes it feels like there's too much and all that he said but the other thing is it means that everybody in the party has a voice right mm -hmm. right and that voice is, is equally important because if you can't rely on the fact that we're all four libertarians and you got three libertarians votes you know like if you can't rely on that that means you got to figure out how to get tracy's vote how to get eric's vote how to get my vote not quite independently exactly i mean i mean you know people are still people so you saying this isn't definite well what i'm saying is <laughs> no well, hey dude right like, no no no, no. Like, well, you definitely have mine what i'm saying I is saw the other guy who's right <laughs> no, no. You, just, you just don't have to go to each and every single person and convince that one person i mean you can kind of uh, you know influence like a whole group of people but it, it's not as easy as just saying i have a base therefore i don't have to worry about them or exactly. i will only worry about them you still have to worry about the base and then you still have to worry about other people and then you still have to answer to your base mm -hmm. and the base could have you know two or three different ideas within it you know so yeah. you might be able to say okay well i know that these three guys are going to vote for me um but that doesn't mean that you're not going to get three different questions like significantly exactly. different mm -hmm. questions that you have to figure out how to answer for and not be uh not play politician Right, because it's yeah. just not going to work. You're going to get three different emails once you're <laughs> exactly. in office right. saying, Hey, dude, hey, I thought. Exactly. I, I thought you right. said this. I thought you were doing that. I thought that. you were right. your like, property rights. I got work. receipts. Exactly. And we're going to show them to you and everybody on Twitter. Exactly. You know, oh, we're going to be like, <laughs> well, he's this is what Pastor's talking about. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Put all this stuff on Twitter. I, I, Twitter is a threat now. Right. Yeah. I don't I'm do that actually. It's an active threat. Just, <laughs> so I will say that. I don't do that. Just, yeah. <laughs> I will say the benefit of uh, things that happened in 2020 with the election, I believe, and somebody will fact check us, check us on this anyways. <laughs> right, right. But that 2020 was the first year that 
non duopoly voters outnumbered the duopoly, meaning independents and third party, independent, no party affiliated and third party voters. And this is on a national level, right. but it was the first time that they actually outnumbered Republicans and Democrats okay. together. All so right. I'm pretty sure that changed in 2020. So I really do think the last four years and the current how, how many months has it been? Mm-hmm. Have, how many does uh, it feel like? Exactly. Do uh-huh. uh, you realize that all this has happened in about years? seven months? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Like, how long is this stupid president now? Jeez. It's, like a, I, it's like a bad marriage. Not that I... What? <laughs> no, you've never had no, 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 no. I'm not talking right now. Just, <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. None of us. We are not traveling down this road. Are you trying to drag us? Yeah, please tell us about bad marriages because we don't know. Please tell us. Just make a joke. No, my my ex wife was actually at, oh, she's oh. a great person. She's a great person. It just didn't work out. So I'm not <laughs> nice really disclaimer to dog right there. Good. I don't have an ex wife. Anybody? You're gonna run hey, for office? Hey, she had to No, but you. I might get famous. Like this video could like propel me, right? Do you not and know then, us? <laughs> and then my 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 ex wife will see that, and then, then all of a sudden CNN's gonna get a phone call. Uh-huh. Then you are getting then, canceled. You know, yeah, you're done. Canceled. Twitter, they're gonna be like, oh, DL's talking trash about his ex wife. Anyway, is a you can cut all that out. You got you're in control, dude. You oh, just, yeah, we can cut all that out. All of it. What? It just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm DL, and this is a. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you're done so talking about talking bad marriages? marriages? No, right. no, no, but it, it's, it's the same concept, right? Like, it, where was I going with that? I'm <laughs> glad we carried on. All right, so what, what I was saying is, I really do think, though, that people are getting tired of yes. the two party system, and they're waking up and they're realizing, I mean, that's the problem, though, is we have to give them legitimate opportunities right. to vote for someone else. So anyone out there in Jacksonville listening to this, I don't care if you're a Republican, Democrat, independent, no party affiliated, Green Party, mm-hmm. Socialist Party, mm-hmm. get out there, get active and try and get on the ballot as long as you're against the establishment. I think to me, that's the key is that there are people that are beholden right. to their party. So, so if you're going to give a- Don't with, take our votes. Yeah, don't run in yeah, district- Don't overrun yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, don't run in district two, district eight or at large group five. Anywhere else in Jacksonville though, we need, have legit- yes, we need yes we need legitimate people you know what's real funny? people like, my, my wife she keeps telling me she goes listen because you know sometimes even even where we are with the campaigns it gets a little rough sometimes we get busy because we have life and right. other things going exactly. on yeah and, and i told my wife a couple weeks ago i said listen i said i'm just i gotta chill a little bit because you know it's a lot of stuff going on and i you know i got a church to lead and stuff like that mm-hmm. and, and she goes you can't i'm like Psst. I'm a grown man. It's not out of spite. I'm like, well, I'm done. <laughs> but, but for me, it was just, I need to find a balance. I, I got to know. What? But here's what she said. She says, the reason why you can't is because you are informing people. Right. She goes, you are actively, she goes, and I've never seen this before. She goes, I, she goes, because my wife is very much a Republican. She's not a libertarian. Mm-hmm. And she goes, but she goes, I'm, edit that she, out. she goes, no, because <laughs> <we're good." laughs> no, she's like, did you tell people I was a libertarian? <laughs> so, she's like, why didn't you mention it? So, so, but here's she what she's saying. Like that. And it's not in. at all. Nope. Now there goes my bad marriage. <laughs> I think he said his wife sounds like this. So, but, but what she's saying is that she goes, I'm, I'm hearing you explain to people that there's another option. Right. Mm-hmm. She goes, and, and she goes, and, and now she's watching kind of from the outside watching this happen. She goes, right. and I'm watching people kind of, oh, mm. what, what do you mean? What? Because like there was a guy one night, we were just, we were going, hey, can I do a shameless plug of Famous Amos? Go ahead. And so it, I was going into the Famous Amos and, and uh, this guy was walking out. I just happened to have some cards on me, some of the palm cards. And I go, hey, here you go. And he goes, what's this for? I said, I'm running for city council. He goes, you're a Republican or Democrat? I said, well, I'm neither. And, <laughs> and, 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 and then he kind of looks at me for a second. And he goes, I said, if you want to be honest, I'm a little bit of both. There's, he goes, how do you feel about this Biden? I said, well, he's horrible. He goes, then we're good. <laughs> we all right. We all right. <laughs> and he was fine. But but the thing is, I think what she was saying is I took a couple of minutes to explain to him, here's the difference. Right. There is a viable option. That's right. And I think that for us, that uh, unfortunately, this is a beast that we have to attack a little bit. It's yep. not just a vote for me, because if we're RRD, you say vote for me, they don't care. Right. right. We have to say, hey, I'm L, vote for me. Right. And, and we have to explain. Mm-hmm. We have to, and I, I don't mind. I don't listen. I think that the more that we get this message out there, yep. the more people are going. You know what? I'm down for that. And here's right. the thing: I don't care if you never go into SOE and change your party affiliation. Just vote Libertarian. Right. Just right. vote with that thinking. Like I don't right. care what number. I don't care Give what letter you have. Given. That's what I'm saying. Like, can you look at these people and go, "These people are crushing. There's no reason for us to change it." No. Most everybody right now is a little fired up. Everybody's right. a little yeah. bit angry. I don't care right. which side they're on. Yeah. Right. And I think that right now is the time for Libertarians to go. Hey, you know what? Here we are. Like, right. check this out. Give us a try. Give right. us a try That's and right. see if we don't kind of change things around for you. And if we don't change the things the way we say we will, vote us out again. 
Yep. Right. There but there's go. another election. Vote us out. And, and, and I'm cool with that. Yep. Right. But give us the, like, don't write us off because we don't fall into R or D. Right. Give us a chance. I truly right. believe there's no more Tea Party Republicans in the Republican they're Party. Gone. The yeah, Ron Paul right. revolution has left the Republican Party and they've joined the Libertarian Party. I really believe that. There might be right. a couple that are still registered Republican, right. maybe even registered Independent. I know a few. I know a few. But mm. if given the option, I think they would vote Libertarian yeah. over a party candidate. Right. Mm-hmm. So. And so, like, then it comes the option, and we've talked about this because, you know, I don't know if people, well, they don't know, but we know that we meet every few weeks. The three right. of us sit down and we talk right. about things that are going on. Like, we're we're closer than just us sitting here yeah. right now. Exactly. And we've actually had this conversation, like, what happens if if we wanted to win? Do you run as a Republican? Do you run as a Democrat? Yeah. Get in right. and in keep your beginning. libertarian mm-hmm. thinking. Right. I'm like, you could. But let's be honest instead. Like, let's choose honest. Let's choose the right thing instead of just trying to get in. Right. Let's inform some people. Let's get, because my thing is this. Okay, I'm running citywide, big city, a lot of stuff going on. Okay, so I have a lot to overcome. Mm-hmm. But imagine if I don't get in. Imagine if we could spread libertarianism a little bit. Maybe we could spread the word a little bit. That's that, right. that maybe next time around, another guy comes up or I do it again or whatever, however it plays yeah. out. But now people are open to the There's idea. another libertarian in a different district yep. or a different group or yes. every 19 city council seats has a libertarian running on the ballot. Exactly. We still have time before you 2023 to get more candidates that right. are libertarians on the but, ballot. But uh, can I always amend that? I always want to amend that as we talk. I'm kind of like Not real. in our district. Well, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> Not two, eight, or five. But, <laughs> but what we're saying is that I, I also don't think we should water down the party to get people in. Yeah, right. No, you right, know right, what I'm right. saying? I think that I think sometimes we reach out and go, Oh, you should come to our party. No, you should come into our party once you realize we're holding the right thinking. Right. That, yeah, that right, we have the right ideas of freedom right. and what people really want. Right. Then you come in. Right. Like we don't need listen, we don't need a bunch of the the liberal Democrats, woke. yeah, the woke ones hopping in and watering us down. At the same time, we don't need just a bunch of Republicans jumping in and going, hey, this is okay too. No, no, no. Right. We need people who are going to be free thinking because if not, right. if we just take in anybody, at some point we just start looking right. like the other Everybody ones. Else. Yes. Right. And, then, and, and even if people don't think like, hey, you know what, I, I'm not really on board with the libertarian message, but I'm I'm having a problem with my particular party, whether it's the Republican Party or the Democrat Party, they can always vote for a libertarian, not only to say, all right, let's give the libertarians a shot, let's see what they can do, but also to send a message to their own party and say, yep. hey, you're screwed up. Because right now, we talked about it a few moments ago, we talked about this idea that there might be a base that people just count on. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, the reason they can count on it is because they're not being they're not really having their feet held to the fire and Mm -hmm. their politicians are very very good at doing one thing one one thing counting either money or votes (laughs) right they do good that sounds like some pastor stuff right there right Right. Right. nickels and noses that's what it's all about right Right. that's what they can do they count very well and when they stop losing or i'm sorry when they stop when they stop uh uh getting the votes that they think they're gonna get and they're going to somebody else then that tells them, that sends them a well, message and it says, hey, shape up. When it's not just they didn't mm-hmm. vote. Because they could go, oh, people didn't come out. That's why. No, right. but when they can say, wait a minute. Oh, they came. Right. They just didn't vote for me yep. anymore. Exactly. Listen, I, I think that in all reality. We'll they, take a spite they, vote. They, yep. <laughs> Thank you, dude. Mm. So, but yep. I, I think that inside this, I think that if we come in, and let's say we don't win. Let's just look at it and say, hey, let's say we don't win. Okay, but imagine if we can come in and change the game a little bit. Mm-hmm. Imagine if we can come in, let's say even in our districts, we pull out five, eight, ten percent. Right. I'm mm. shooting for thirty. All right, 30, at least. Right, that's what I'm saying. Right. But imagine, listen, but people don't understand you pull ten percent, that's attention. Yeah. Right. People will start going, Whoa, what the heck is that? Now all of a sudden, here's what happens. I know you mentioned this a lot about let's start putting our narrative in there. Yeah. Let's make the other parties start having to come around to us and address these issues and talk about right. these things. Because you, you talk about that quite exactly. a bit. Exactly. You put your platform on your social media, you say Second Amendment Sanctuary City. Well, maybe in your district, that's not going to be that popular. I don't know. But in my district, I could call out the Republican that won by 70% and say, hey, why is Jacksonville still not a Second Amendment Sanctuary that's City? That's right. right. That was a campaign promise that I said would be one of my first bills. Or if I was a in a more Democrat district, I can say, hey, what happened to decriminalizing marijuana? Yep. I put that mm-hmm. on my platform. Why haven't you gotten that accomplished? Or at least that bill but pushed through city council I think that to get a do, vote on. You right. doing that forces them to talk exactly. about it. It forces the yeah. like it right. forces Where do you ten, stand on this yep, issue? Ten percent mm-hmm. of the vote makes them start going, Oh, we gotta talk about these things that we didn't want to talk about. Exactly. Right. Good. Exactly. So if nothing else, we can start switching the narrative a little yep. bit. Exactly. And that starts with, like I yep. look at this and I go, you know what? I don't think that we're building just our campaigns. I think we're building the party. 
right. by building the party to something that people can look at and go, oh, they're not a bunch of freaks. Because a lot right. of times libertarians get the, mm, get the know, shot sure, of sure, a bunch exactly. of freaks. <laughs> no doubt, so godless freaks. They, <laughs> you know. But I don't want to go godless. Like, know, I, 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 I don't want to go freaky. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, obviously, it's freak by Jesus. But, other, <laughs> yeah. but, but I think that that's so what this does. That <laughs> well, it's all right. So, I don't you, know you know what's funny? is actually on one of the things, one of the groups, um, it's like a libertarian candidates or something on Facebook. Yeah. Like, I'm just starting to learn this stuff that's right, out there. Right. And they were talking about the church and, and you know, and libertarians and right. stuff like that. And I says, well, hang on. I says, I actually use a biblical example about why it's okay for me, even as a pastor, to fall into libertarian thinking. Right. I'm explaining this, and you guys tell me, hey, tell that makes sense or doesn't make sense, okay? Makes I, sense. I'm done. All right, so <laughs> That's but, right. But, I got you, man. But, but, but the idea behind it is this, is that uh, I, the example I use, because people seem to think that Christians, that we fall into this certain category, we're going to be Republican, we're going to have these type of thinkings, and listen, we are not Republican. Like we're right. not Republican. And, and so I often tell them, I say, listen, I say, here's the thing. I said, Christians have gotten lazy. They don't want to go out and make disciples like we're supposed to. Mm -hmm. They want to just make laws to make people act like Christians. Right. That doesn't mm -hmm. work. Like you can look at all the laws that we have. Is that making people act right? Right. No. Exactly. So the apostle Paul, biblically, he went into towns. And when he went into towns, he didn't go find the political leaders right. and say, hey, you don't need to pass a bunch of laws. Hey, to get make... this done for me. Right, exactly. No, he went and made disciples. Right. So I truly believe that government is not there to make people act like Christians. Right. We, as Christians, we go make disciples and watch how cities change mm -hmm. in the way we don't need to make laws anymore. Right. If that's your goal. If as a right. Christian, once again, don't want a theocracy. People always say, well, right. as a Christian, you want... No, I don't. That becomes right. very dangerous because, okay, it's good while 19 of us are Christians. Yeah. What happens next time when they're not Christians anymore and they can run in that direction? Mm, right. So exactly. we have to understand that we are governed yep. by law. Right. And so I think that it's good that we can understand that, you know what, I don't have to agree with you right. to allow you to do something. Like, yeah. I don't have to condone what you're doing to allow you to do it. I think right. it's right for you to do exactly. it. Um, I think we've talked about this. Uh, I did that stand uh, per, uh, the, kind of promoting the fact that they should not be closing down a strip club. And I got yeah. a little pushback from the Christians. What about your congregation? Uh, Any of them like, what? No, they're, they, no, they kind of get it. No, <laughs> yeah. no, no, I made it very clear. Like, you were playing like, a little yeah. bit of devil's uh, advocate. Yeah, but, but, here's, but here's what I was saying. I said, you know what? I said, I'm not going to the strip club. I don't condone behavior of the guy. I don't condone Which violence. Mascaras? Mascaras. Yeah, <laughs> it's probably. in the news. It's a big where, deal. Where was it? It's in the... Uh, Southside? Southside Boulevard. It's down I'm just testing it's, to see if you know exactly. It's more by, your, it's more by your house, DL. But, uh, but, I don't know where it's at. Uh, here was my, I don't go. Here was my complaint. <laughs> I see two, what you did there. Two councilmen. Oh yeah, they're, they're, go, go down and go court, down there. It's, 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 <laughs> you'll see that guy. See on the corner. You know that trash all the way down the street. He covered here. well. <laughs> he covered well. He's it's like, right oh, it's uh, it's, it's by your house. I think it's by your house, DL. I think I is that where we first no. So inside, it's like my my complaint was is that we have to. Two councilmen are running around bragging about how they're trying to shut that place down. Right. Wow. And, I'm, and people are like, well, you can't do this. I'm like, no, we can't do that. Right. Because what happens when they want to use certain guidelines to shut yeah. down a church That's or right. another private or business? Or a gun range. Right. Or a gun mm -hmm. range. Exactly. What, it's, right. what happens when city council members have a brother or a brother-in-law that want to open right. this business over here and they realize that's the competition? Yeah. I'll just right. shut those down. Right. Exactly. No, we right. have to defend everybody's right, right to practice what they want to do, even if right. we don't condone it or agree with it. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a big stand for all of us as libertarians. Yeah. I don't have to like it, right. yeah. but I believe in your right to do it. I mean, I've always said that like, Christians, religious people should be some of the most fervent libertarians ever. Absolutely. Only because like, even if they say, Hey, you know, I think these ideas are terrible. Like, you know, we shouldn't have prostitution, like shouldn't have not necessarily government shouldn't have, but just shouldn't have in mm -hmm. general. You know, I think they, I, I, the reason I say it is because like, Hey, it's great. Like you said earlier, as long as they're in power, but when they're not in power, then the morality shifts mm -hmm. to whoever's in power, yep. whatever that means. Mm -hmm. Right. And that morality could be against you. Right. You know, mm -hmm. and, and it's always I think the number one rule that libertarians love to warn people about is say only, you know, when you give somebody power, imagine if your opponent, your worst enemy had that power. Would you be OK with it? If you're not OK with it, then you shouldn't it's give it to idea. your guy. Yeah. Oh, right. It's kind of, it's kind of, I want to get y'all. Go ahead. It's kind of, I'm saying it kind of goes into um, the way Finally. they, they want to, uh, no, like, I'm, just a, good, on, I'm just, I'm just a good, I'm just a good listener. Yeah. But um, <laughs> it kind of goes into the thing about how they want to kind of erase. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> 
Like, I'm just saying this, it kind of goes into the thing about um, Southern culture and Southern heritage. How they kind of want to erase that and then use the state in order to do that by way of taking down statues. And the left wants to say, okay, well, the South is all about, uh, yeah, we're going to go there. It's all about oh, racism. It's all about bigotry. It's all about slaves. It's all about, exact, you know, yeah. It's all about this, that, and the third. But, <laughs> but you know, then I say, okay, cool. They take down our statues. They take down our monuments. They erase our culture. What makes you think they're not going to take those same powers and use it against your own? Right. They're going to take down. What if take down your? Um, I don't know. Uh, the, the Lincoln statue over in right. in Washington. Can, what if they take can down? Can I ask a question? What about yeah. Martin Luther King? Express what about the? Yeah, Martin what happens King. when that becomes the topic and they start pushing, saying, right. "Oh, wait a minute. Why don't we pull this down? I'm yeah, offended right. by that." Exactly. And that's why everybody should have their right statue or road or whatever. Yeah. Who cares? Hey, right. Martin mm -hmm. Luther King was a pastor, and we're not Christian culture anymore. I want that. I want that yeah. taken right. down because he was a Christian. And it's not about right. race mm -hmm. at that point, right there. They found exactly. another argument. They found it's religion. Not about race. Right. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Or in New York, they take away Malcolm X Boulevard. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, it's yep. like, you know, we don't practice that. We don't do that. Or none of us wear glasses anymore. He right. wore glasses. Let's take that down. Well, yeah. often, <laughs> and, 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 you're right. Yeah. Okay. Oftentimes, the, the, the conversation and the energy that's put forward is like, could be used elsewhere. Absolutely. You know, we put all this energy into, like, we were talking about schools earlier. We're talking about, hey, we got to change the name, all this. And I'm like, if we put all that, what would happen if we put that energy into just making sure that they were educated? You know, here in, here in Jacksonville, there's a company, uh, there's, a, there's an organization called Daniel Kids, mm -hmm. and they work with at risk uh, mm -hmm. students. And I joined up with them early on in my, when I first came to Jacksonville, and I became a mentor. And here's the number one thing they told me they said, we're dying to have men. They can't get enough men yeah. to come in and be mentors because what they do is they match men to boys and then women to girls. And so they don't have enough men to go around to all the boys that they wow. have. Right. And I'm like, what if we spent the energy fighting over a stupid statue and said, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm just going to go and make sure that this, it doesn't matter. Young black man, young white man, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, whoever you come across, I'm going to make sure that they have a good education right? What's better than like, seriously, what's better than giving them an education? Is it really better to say, I'm going to spend all my time and energy to make sure that this stupid statue that half the city doesn't even know is there doesn't care. or doesn't exactly. even care, doesn't care. Yeah. which exactly. one, the, one or both, right? Half the city is, is un, not worried about it. Or this kid right here, I'm going to make sure that this kid gets a good education and make sure that they can, you know, pursue whatever dreams that they have. Exactly. Isn't a problem itself that the school never taught them who that person was? in the first place right these kids don't even know who these people are but right they're taking well, out the statues you're, you're, and right. like, I said, like that's the funny thing if you went to the students and said hey what about this they'd be like oh, okay. right our football team yeah. sucks yeah <laughs> yeah. Or like, right. yeah or like ac or like ac skinner parkway down in the, in the south side they was he, he was in some circles said yeah he could have been a racist but no one's taking down this yeah where's yes, that? Right. Yes. but uh -huh. where does that stop though it, they, yeah. that's napoleon the bonaparte bridge right exactly or lem turner exactly yeah. right uh andrew jackson well mm -hmm. jacksonville it's named after Andrew Jackson. Exactly. So we're going to go back with to the, with the, the, state, the state with the highest, Calvert, we're going back the state with the highest, the highest Seminole presence Calvert. in Florida. But he's right. in Jacksonville with the exactly. statue right in front of where the um, the landing was. Yeah. So, but my, And it's not my, that we're opposed to necessarily changing things. Like changing right. things happens, right? The big thing that I always tell people, I'm like, look, if we want to change the name, raise the money for it. Shouldn't be yes, private. Private. Crowd raise, private. Raise the money for it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Raise the money for it. Change the name. It's like three hundred thousand dollars, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars to change per the name. You know, for, for all of them. Uh, no, one for one. School. For one, one school. school. Yeah, for one Holy. school. Holy. Hey, yeah, because they got to change like all the documents, all the letters. It's a permit so, and everything, and isn't permits, it? Oh, I mean, gosh, anything yeah. anywhere where that name resides has to be changed. And you said and there's like sixteen schools or nine. There are ten, I think, or something like that. So that's three million dollars, right? Wouldn't it just be easier to number all the schools, guys? Yeah, right. One through ten. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. And just like 12 districts. No. <laughs> no, like, like it, you have like PS12, PS6, like public right. school. That's not right. Great. What problem solved? Or mm -hmm. that $3 million on changing the names of the schools could pay for school buses to drive students to a school that school is School vouchers. <laughs> yeah, right. school mm -hmm. vouchers. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I mean, because a lot of people argue, well, yeah, with school of choice, my child's stuck. They're you know, we're poor, stuck in a bad neighborhood. How am I going to get him to the better school? Right. Exactly. Well, with $3 million, if you said right. hire some bus I mean, drivers. The kid that I mentored, he was, I'm trying to remember where he lived exactly, but he had to get a particular exemption to go to a, a, a nicer school that mm -hmm. was not within his area. Yep. And he was able, now, unfortunately, he, um, 
he wasn't so diligent about going, but he didn't get the exemption. <laughs> but he got accepted. He got it. He got accepted and he got the exemption. And you know, the, the the rest of it's an entirely different story. But the fact that he had to go through that process, the just fact that he couldn't just a good say, education. Yeah, like because wow. think about it. If he has to go through the effort, then that means that means that the the school is kind of banking on whatever it is that they're offering as being incentive enough. Mm -hmm. And if we had a system where the schools had to actually court students, students in the same way colleges it's, do it's, it's like how many kids are like oh man i want to go to this college and then they work really hard to get into get a particular college why aren't we doing the same thing with our high schools and maybe i don't know middle schools maybe a little bit too far but Listen, maybe not but you know say hey like look would you like to go to this school they've got you know volleyball or whatever you know whatever welding whatever whatever it is, whatever, class, whatever it is, yeah, whatever whatever class, it is exactly. that draw is that brings that student to that right. school whatever that school happens to tell it maybe it's athletics maybe right. it's academics whatever it is magnet school is kind of that idea yeah, yeah. okay mm -hmm. see because our program right now the way it's set up is that there's x amount of money goes to this school and now they tell these kids you got to go to this school now if you say hey you know what kids you have the money you decide what school you want to go right, to exactly. now watch what happens this school says wait a minute i don't have automatic guaranteed students right. yep. i gotta kick up my game a little bit right. i gotta teachers. teach some kids mm -hmm. i gotta do some stuff right. whatever it is now you start letting that and watch how the competition shakes itself around mm -hmm. in schools even right. in public schools that now all of a sudden you're not guaranteed a job and right. students and money and funding now you work for it right here's the thing i think that as a whole libertarians feel like that about everything that's right. yes it's not a school issue it's a competition mm -hmm. thing allow people mm -hmm. yep. to be involved right. don't put so many things in place guidelines standards whatever it happens to be don't put so many government regulations in place that people can't get into right. that occupation or whatever it is give people a reason to want something specific there you and, go. But then right? give them the mm -hmm. means to actually get there. Yeah. Don't do it's yeah. like, almost like their Remove job the is barriers. keep them out. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's almost like keep them out of this. No, right. no, make it open. Like I, I, truly, we can understand competition makes things better, oh, not yeah. worse. Oh, exactly. When I was like 19, 20, somewhere around there, and I was, you know, kind of getting into the job market. There were companies where they were like, Oh, dude, oh, you were 19 years old and just getting in the job market? Your parents must have liked you. Right. Jeez, <laughs> the rest of us had paper routes and giant. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right. well, thanks to child labor laws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah see, Whoa, so, oh, here right it is. Transition. Oh, well, yeah. we, we going down that road? <laughs> we going down that road. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> we'll go down that road in a minute. But All right. check yes, it out. So, yeah, yeah. so the idea is that, like, we've already experienced that in real life and people respect it mm -hmm. right we already have it so people are like oh we wouldn't want to do that here why not it works mm -hmm. elsewhere it worked when i was an 18 year old guy my friends would be like dude don't go over to that factory man they treat you like crap you yeah. want to go yeah. over here because that place over there you know you get awesome benefits they got great mm -hmm. this you get great the pay, PTO five. you know right Wh whatever it is that the you know the, like all the there's pretty girls there like oh okay well, all right you know, over, you know they got one matter. hour break bro right like <laughs> whatever the kid whatever it was that was in, an incentive to go there you know, and then when you unfortunately had to work at the one, you know, the one place that wasn't so great, you were constantly looking at other options. That's and right. they knew it. Yep. Mm -hmm. They knew. They may not have cared, but they knew it. It's, it's yeah. the concept of, like, they started talking years back about making doctors put prices on things. Like, oh, yeah. advertise price prices. Price transparency, yes. Yes. That yep. You understand that once a doctor puts a price, or an attorney, anything along those lines, put a price on something. Right. Hey, if you come here as this chiropractor, you come here and get this work done, I'm going to charge you 50 bucks. Yep. That right. is going to charge you 100 well, guess where I'm going? Right. And then they mm -hmm. found out that it, would, it, it, it increases production because people are like, oh, I got to do something here. Right. And, and increases the level that they do again. Yep. The competition is not a bad thing. Right. The problem is government doesn't like competition. Right. They don't like it amongst mm -hmm. the people. And they definitely yep. don't like it against them. Yep. Exactly. Because yeah. people, I, I've been pointing out lately, I said that the, the private sector, private businesses shouldn't have to compete with the government for employees. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Like you're not going to beat the government. The yeah. government's going to give free money for nothing. But the, these private companies, which is what we're finding they were right now in town. They were to prove that. Exactly. <laughs> they, they keep giving them money. They're like, I'm just going to chill at the house. Well, of course they will. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So we look at that and I shouldn't have to, if I own a small business, I own a little bakery or whatever it happens to be i should have to compete with the government to get an employee right exactly. the government should be involved in this yep. the government ought to be employing people or actually not employing people right. and just giving them money and that's what we've turned into we you can't compete against the government mm -hmm. right and mm -hmm. uh the pandemic and covid yep taught us that it, with education for example so many people homeschooled their children and i think there was a record low of kids pulled out of public school and put into homeschooling because yep. they they found out their kids excelled at home. 
because yeah. the curriculum's already online. It's already available. You can learn more off YouTube than you can yeah. less, at less distraction. underperforming public schools. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Right. So they found those kids would be exactly. be at home and work less hours yep. and learn more stuff. Yep. And plus, they're in an environment where they feel that they're safe and, fam- and, probably, and it's yeah, familiar. Right. Yeah. And exactly. it's like when you take them to school, they got these uh, mask mandates and safety protocols, health protocols. Yep. That the budget is going into not their education, but for their compliance. Oh. You know, they're not going to be learning anymore. They're going to be, hey, put that mask on. You get this fine for this new regulation that just passed just yesterday. Right. You know, what budget is going into these plastic barricades between these children? The budget going into getting them these masks, the budget to give them to, to feed them differently, do all this type of stuff to have them walk in single file line mm-hmm. weirdly. You know, it's, it's another just, brick it's, in the wall. Another yeah. brick in the wall. Like, you know, like, like, <laughs> yes. like, 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 like I taught for six years. I was a teacher. Mm-hmm. And, and so you always have that kid, because I know I was that kid. And um, like he sets things off, he messes around, he plays. That's right. Every time you have to stop, to do this, you've lost everybody's attention. Now you got to do X amount of time to, to get them back to focus yep. again. Yes. And think about what you just said. Mm-hmm. Pull your mask up. Do this. Do that. These are yeah. all things not education related, right. but it's getting their distraction to this. Right. Mm-hmm. And so you know what kids can end up doing? Mass non-compliance. Right. With mm-hmm. all those kids. Right. And they do it naturally. Yep. Right. Just, you know, That's like, right. Listen, libertarians get behind. <laughs> and, and, and the Mass only, non-compliance. And the only yep. solution is to medicate them. Right. Dear Lord, you that's a whole, down there. We're that's all a whole, that's a, people. That's a whole other layer. Everywhere. That's oh a whole goodness. other layer. I am yeah. the host DL, and I will take these things <laughs> all over the place. But really, yeah. we're here to talk about Jacksonville, and so like I got an idea. So how about we do this? How about quickly? Because we're 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 at uh, a little bit over an hour right now, and it's yep. not a bad time. We're good. Um, I, I'd like to hear kind of what your vision of of better Jacksonville might look like. It doesn't have to necessarily be like, oh, when I get into office, I'm going to push these things. And so I'm just kind of like, like, hey, if I had my libertarian wish list, not an extreme one, not the utopia, just kind of like somewhere in between, somewhere that that, that people listening could also vi- envision. Mm. What would that sound like? Who wants to go? Who's ready? Mm. Let me go first real quick. All right, all because, right. Uh, man, Tracy. You know, why not? Yeah. And Boom. um I mean, is on. I mean, the reason Rob is on, <laughs> you know, and um, the vision that I have for the um, for Jacksonville and itself, or specifically my district, is that people have more autonomy with their home ownership, mm-hmm. with um, having their savings intact, because with all the price gouging and inflation going on, it's depleting the savings accounts, and when savings accounts become depleted. There's no way of really investing in anything. The reason why, you no, know, uh, remember you gave me a subject the other day. Say, hey man, uh, can you give a subject about uh, entrepreneurship and why there's such a lack of entrepreneurship later, uh, lately, especially since the pandemic? As well, because with all these uh, the prices going up, with government giving more programs, you have less savings account, which less investment, which less incentive to go ahead and give your money to a fledgling business that want to get started independently and uh, give a service to the community as they should have. And uh, that's one of the visions that I do have is if you have your own home, you have your own liquid income coming in, you, mm-hmm. you're able to uh, invest, you're able to, um, you know, have your own economy, your independent economy and our independent economy is being taken away with all of these things going to programs we don't care anything about. We don't really care about what the Jaguars are doing in this day and time. We just want to get back to work. You right. know, we don't want to be paying overpriced gas prices. We don't want to worry about what our children, what our our children are going to be getting put into when they go to these schools. Right. We don't want to have to worry about these things. And that's my little vision of Jacksonville is just to have a simple autonomy of their own independent economy. I, I think in my world, I would think more of financial decisions, it's kind of like what you're saying. Right. In the sense of, but well, here's what I'm getting at. It's like once it, they it, get it, this is what you can do with what it. What you can do with it. They yeah. do, they're able to start keeping some of theirs. Absolutely. I'm a big advocate. If we have to collect less taxes for all these other projects, guess who keeps the money then? The people we do. do. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Then you get to make those type of decisions. Like what's best for my family? How do Definitely. I invest what I want to do? Right. But, but more importantly, I think that if we can pull funding from a lot of these, like I'm just learning, like it's just, You've clued me in on entirely too a many. Lot of <laughs> like, like just like, way too many. He's like, "What about this?" And I'm like, "Dude, I don't even know about that one." <laughs> and, and so, like, you start realizing where all this money is getting spent. Imagine if that money was wiped out and it was kicked back to things that actually benefit the community. Mm-hmm. And, and what I mean by that, it's not just because we're they're so focused on downtown right now. Everything's downtown. Everything's downtown. Most people don't care. If you're you if care. you live in Jacksonville, you don't care about downtown. Right? Most of us don't even go. Right. Yeah. I go down there because my wife works down there. Other mm-hmm. than that, we don't go downtown. And they're trying to make it something that it's not. And they're putting a lot of money into doing that. Imagine if you could take those funds and spread them across Jacksonville. That it's no longer mm-hmm. everything's focused down here to or this area or that area, mm-hmm. where now it's kind of spread out. And I, I like the idea of collecting taxes 
that work to everybody's benefit, not That's just right. a certain group. Um, you know, lately I don't like that idea of collecting taxes. Period. <laughs> <laughs> um, taxation so, is theft. Uh, there, 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 there it is. It uh, needs to be said. Uh, taxation is theft. Mm -hmm. No, not tax no, the rich. No, I thought she said tax the rich. Uh, I thought tax no, the rich. Was, oh, okay. Uh, but, but, but here's what I'm getting at. <laughs> that ends there, up there, 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 I truly <laughs> believe there are things that happen in the city that need funding. I think sure. there are good things yeah. happening in the city that need funding. Right. Uh, like I've recently come in touch with the library system. I've, I've talked to some of y'all yeah. about it. Like I didn't care about the library. Socialist went, book repository. Socialist <laughs> book repository. Now people have made the argument Gosh. to you that about how the library can be privatized also. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, so, but, mm. uh, but here's what I'm getting at: the premise of not yeah, doesn't have yeah. to be the library. Right. But right. the idea of the library, it's they got them scattered throughout town. They're actually building a new one up in your area, mm. and, and and you can use that. Everybody. Everybody can go in there. It's not just you have to be this age or this person or this age. Like you can go into any of them anywhere, use their services. Mm -hmm. A park, a city, we have a park right by the end of our street. It's on the river down there. Yeah. You know what? Wouldn't it be nice? We have a number of people who drive from other neighborhoods to come into our park. The problem is when it's not their neighborhood, they tend not to take care of it. Hmm. Okay. Imagine if you right. could spread that money across parks. Right. So that now they don't have to go two miles over right. to go to the good park. You go to the park right down the street from your house. Right. That's a wise use of money. And you know what that does? Community. There you right. go. The, the park, you know what I'm saying? Because I'll go to the park and, and there's people from other neighborhoods and we go walk, my wife and I, we go walking through the park. You talk to people, hey, what's going on? And you find out they're from over across the way. But it's funny how that park becomes community. Right. You know what? If you want to be honest with you, if you want to talk about race issues, go to the playground. Kids don't care. Kids, kids don't care. It's a learned right. They just go in there and they play and they do their thing. And I'm like, you watch that. Yeah. Start promoting that from the beginning. So if we're going to, in my mind, you're talking about this utopia, not quite utopia. I would like to see if we're going to collect funds. Right. I would like them to see where it benefits the community as a whole. Okay. That everybody can do. Now, I asked this and y'all, we can debate it later. We'll talk about it later. But could we do the same type of thing like this if we collect the money and made the bus free? The city bus. Because then, well, if we weren't funding, yeah, in a, yeah, in if we weren't funding everything else, <laughs> we weren't funding everything else, or things that benefited a very specific yeah. population or a very narrow population, mm -hmm. right? So, like, we do anything that deals with uh, the stadium, yeah. right? It doesn't benefit me because not at all. I, don't care. I can't even keep up with a football game. I'm all like, you see what the I'm first sorry? down, yeah. the seventh inning, what? I don't need <laughs> to know. Like, exactly. I'm just confused, right? Like, I, my wife is an immigrant and she understands football better than me. I don't know what that says about me, but whatever. You know, but 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 anything that that relates to sports here in town doesn't benefit me. And most people does because I'm not interested in it. Right. You know, and and uh, but I am interested in the park. That's right. And a lot of people like I'm interested because I have a kid. That's yes. right. But yeah. a lot of people might just be like, you know what? I'm tired of being at my house because I've been locked down. I'm just gonna go to the park. <laughs> the park. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or they might just say, you know what? I like some fresh air. I'm gonna go sit at the park. I'm gonna go, you know, maybe there's some hot babes down there running. I don't know. Whatever the reason they want <laughs> no, to go down the park. Part. Why listen, not? Is your wife you better right? hold her. <laughs> she's not gonna listen to us. Come on. You're unhappy. No, no, you go to the park. I, you I are would. not going to the park. Let's make that very clear. I'm so just taking the boy. I, no, you're not. I'll take the I, boy. I go with my son so that uh -huh. I'm, that. <laughs> I'm digging my old. Yes, you're not making so, better. You're you're my, utopia. Yes, there we right, go. Uh, but the but the gist is people could find different reasons to go down to the park and like you said, community. So now I'm interact because the park is nice. It's not like run down. Like, oh, the rich people have the really nice park down there, but I got. But imagine if park. yours, you no know, matter what your neighborhood else. looks like, your park is good because right, the because, city put money into that. Because mm -hmm. one, we're taking fewer taxes in. We need fewer taxes because we're uh, we're supplying them to things that have a more gen general purpose mm -hmm. uh, for everyone. Right. You know, as opposed to something that's more you know. And honestly. Parks right now, I mean, you can make a libertarian argument like, oh, we can privately fund those. And that's a fine conversation to have later. later. But how about right now, we stop funding like stadiums and things. We're like, hey, practice you're, fields. If yes. you're Shad Khan, you're one, a billionaire. You're a billionaire. Mm -hmm. Two, you know some billionaires and you know some millionaires as well. So you have people that you can call upon and say, I would like to get some money for this investment. I'm telling you, it's going to be an awesome. And you go to the Bill, Shark Tank. And, 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 well, here's the thing. Here's an right. idea. Go ahead. Mm. Field a good football team. That's sell serious. out the stadium. You'll have the money to pay for that Use stuff. the money from the ticket sales to fund your practice field. I'm going to assume do that the, makes sense for football people. Yeah. Yeah, okay. that makes sense. Yeah. 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 He's I'm just job. saying, okay. like, so I had season tickets for five years. Mm -hmm. I got to see one good year of football. That costed me a lot of money. Wow. wow. <laughs> I quit going and I got a part time job instead at that brewery I was telling you about that almost went out of business and can't get fined if people go to that business. They didn't get any 
tax def they might have got some tax breaks i'm not sure because of they didn't get where they're located them. but they didn't get a hundred million dollars in yep. tax breaks right. say that much and i'm all for tax so all right yeah this is my day utopia i'm all for <laughs> sorry i'm gonna jump in all i'm all for all tax cuts for everyone in duval county i'm not for our government choosing the winners and losers right and the exactly. rate at which their property taxes are cut if we quit taking money out of our pockets and the and giving it to Shad Khan. Mm -hmm. Is he public mm -hmm. enough? I can say his name. He's just so. yeah, well, yeah. yeah. not live. We'll good. beep it. We'll beep it. The <laughs> owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Let me tell you, let me tell you, he just put be, he I just put four hundred million dollars in yeah. the shipyard. I think exactly. we can call his name out. Exactly. So I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's public enough. Yeah. Like I'm just saying, like that's my problem. Yeah. And I live in District Two. So another thing, like the gas tax that was raised so that 40% of it can go to that stupid monorail yep. so they can extend it to the neighborhoods that still doesn't come up to Ocean Way. And they told us to, to, to stay at home, but then it ain't going out to Baldwin. It ain't going out to the beaches. right now and people still aren't taking it. Right. Exactly. No one uses <laughs> right. 40% use it. 40% of that six time. cent My gas tax. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yep. went to something no one ever uses and they're trying to say oh, we're going to make it autonomous this that and blah, blah blah i was like i'm i'll drive my own vehicle because i live in ocean way <laughs> right and, yeah. the, and the people that pay the tax are the people that the gas tax are the people that live further, further away, away from downtown <laughs> mm -hmm. so i'm not getting i mean i could get an uber all the way from ocean way that'd be a 50 dollar mm -hmm. uber or i'll just drive my car down and i'll park and then if there was anything to do in downtown which there isn't and there isn't because our government and their licensing mm -hmm. requirements to open a bar or a brewery mm -hmm. or a restaurant and the fees someone has to pay to do that. I don't know what's going on over there. We move around too much. All right. That's uh, me. No, that's that's check it in. That's me. <laughs> that's me talking yeah, about the That's my no, oh, dude. He's talking about yeah. real. Oh, no. Uh, the CIA was like, hey, we're having trouble. Hey. Too close. He's yeah. like, hey, stop it. Yeah, so <laughs> but, but my, yeah. my yeah. tax money way too much. Right. So my idea of my, you, sorry, that was me just complaining about the dystopia we're currently in. do that. My yeah. utopia it, would Preach have it. more accountability and more transparency on where our tax dollars are going. And that's pretty much it. I want to see District 2 where I'm at. I want to see some of the taxes we all pay come back to District 2. Mm -hmm. And honestly, just for the roads. So uh, the current city councilman told me, and he's finishing up, I think, eight years, and he's term limited out, that after he was voted into office, but before he took office, there was money available to widen Alta Drive right, right. Okay. up to basically, I forget exactly where, but I th think New Berlin, either way, okay. it, it was going to turn it from a two lane to a four lane. And that might be a little too far, but I'm pretty sure that was it. And so the money was there before he got voted in and it was gone by the time he took office. Oh wow! wow. The money was wow. sent somewhere else to a different district in Jacksonville. And it took him eight years fighting to take money from other districts to fund a project that was already approved and the money was already put into the account. And so, how much are they giving out to well, billionaires? Right. Exactly. We could have wow. Uh, wow. not built a $100 million practice field and just widen the road that city council said they would do eight years ago. Yeah. Right. That's, I think, what we want to see is right. accountability and transparency. And I want to see my constituents' money stay not just in district two but how about there let's be, uh, there should be some benefit to exactly it. Yes. how about mm -hmm. let's fix a road that was supposed to happen eight years ago it is right. it's finally getting wide right. done i've seen yeah, yeah i go up there and see them doing it's some of just it's been they've been doing it, for a it long should have been done eight yeah. years ago. exactly right mm -hmm. so i mean that's yeah that's my utopia awesome <laughs> yes sir so we're rounding out of, uh we're, we're about an hour and a half or so okay. roughly uh right. what do we want to go what, what, what do we want to do here I want to go to the bathroom. All right. Oh man! Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> we're gonna break. So we're gonna have to take a bathroom break. All of us, not in the same bathroom because it's a house. <laughs> in the restaurant. studio? How many do you have? Oh, right, right in the studio. No, do we want to continue on after this, or do we, I mean, what do we want to go with this? So we want to eat pizza. I know there's some pizza out there. Like, I'm do, good. I'm good. Go, I'm, go I'm, can, I'm how good. Well can you, how well can you edit this right here? How 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 well can you edit this portion? Right and say here. like as you right. said, right, and then you just boom, and we'll be like, all right, we'll just yeah, cut yeah, it man. like all the videos you see on TV with the oh, like. No, and I'll do pizza. <laughs> well, you, know, you want to wrap us up then? We're yeah, yeah, let's wrap it up. Okay. So, hey, everybody in Jacksonville, hope you're watching. Again, we've got Eric Parker. We've got Tracy Robinson. Ro Robinson. I can't even say Robinson. Robinson. Rob is on. Tracy Robinson. Yeah. We got Robinson. Tracy Rob is on. Robitussin. 
Nope. Oh, <laughs> that uh, works. <laughs> and then we have uh, Pastor Tubb, and I can never say his last name. It's Rorabar. Rorabar. I, I yeah, was like Rorabar. in ninth grade before I learned it. Don't right, worry about right, it. Right, right. You know something funny? So, I've been talking to you all this time, but the first time I'm hearing your whole name. <laughs> really? Yeah. Jerry yeah, Tubb. Like, yeah, yeah no, like nobody right. calls me Jerry at all. And in fact, yeah. I, that's why I, I had, had it. it put on the ballot. Because, right. Okay. So, all right. So you started this. <laughs> so we actually right, we're not we're going down that road. No, what was funny is that because I like I realized I had to have this on the ballot because that's how people know me. Right. They put Jerry, they wouldn't know. We actually had a lady she worked at the place where i was getting my hair cut and during that time that, that they called me jerry because when i first came into town and so she decided to come to the church and so only at that one place where they happened to call me jerry you know so she come walking in and she goes um yeah i'm here because jerry's here and then everybody in the church was like who, who is she talking about like, we don't know but jerry in here. And they're the like, mouse they're, they're like that like the pastor and like, oh, Tub, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's so like, it, that's so it nobody like, yeah, so yeah. nobody knows me as Jerry. So I'm like, oh, I better make sure this is known. Like, and so Man. I had to go do and do all of that down at SOE in order to get Tub put on the ballot. That's how everybody knows wow. me as. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can get robe is on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Robe so, is on. Do you want to robe or rob? Let's get let's practice that. Kamala, right now. let's, let's right go now. and do robe. Tell us, Kamala. No. Robe. How robe. have you? How, how, is, how is your name? How do you Kamala. say this? <laughs> How do, how do you, you say, say it? it? I say Robeson. That's why I thought No, Robeson. are you just okay. saying that because that's how we say it? No, no, no. Okay, he's Robeson. A to, he's a way to grasp he, it. Are you okay. sure it's not yeah. Robeson? It is Robeson, but just for... It's for it's like it's like it's like it's like it's like uh what do you call it? It's like don't bend your knee. It's like a vowel. It's like it's like vowel change. Who cares? All right, so just Robeson. Robeson. Just say Robeson. Okay. Everywhere I go on public, when I'm dealing with bills or whatever like that, just say Robeson. And they okay. and they get it immediately. It's like okay, cool. But that if you say it. Robinson, they add that in, add in there always, every time. Okay. Yeah. Try. Right. Cool. So <laughs> so district district two, district eight, and at large five. So that basically means everywhere. Uh, look these guys up. Uh, I'll post some links um, in the show notes so that you can find them on their Facebook page. Um, and then you know go like their page, talk to them, say hey, reach out and say hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Uh, you know, maybe try to stay away from the national things, you know, because obviously Afghanistan and stuff like that, mm -hmm. they may have an opinion on it, but it's not really relevant to Jacksonville. So try to, you know, try to try to see whether or not they're a good fit for your vote. And hopefully they are. And um, outside of that, maybe in the future, we may have some individual interviews. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what, uh, what we come up with. But uh, with all that said, we're out. That's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed the episode and had a few good laughs. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to connect with each one of the three candidates. You can also find other episodes of the Liberty Dad podcast at libertydad.com and youtube.libertydad.com or watch shows on facebook.com forward slash free speech media network with me on Monday night at 10 p.m. You can also connect with me at Liberty Dad on Facebook, Liberty Dad Pod, all one word, on Twitter, or email to libertydadpodcast at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and pass this video along to your friends. And remember, if you're a champion of liberty, your business is people, and your product is liberty. Have a great week. Catch you next time. And I'm out. <laughs>